I, you know, I, I know what I fucking can't stand. I, I hate, uh, um, like I, uh, horror movies. I hate because I totally buy in, and every one of them scares the shit out of me. Oh, really? That's and then I also hate in the third act when the problem has been resolved and then they add just one more fucking hurdle and <laughs> yeah, say, Jesus yeah. fucking Christ. Right. Can we get out of here? Yeah. It's He's getting up again. You just hit him with a fucking machete. It's over. Yeah, it's like you guys are celebrating the victory too much and there's yeah. at least five minutes left. <laughs> They're like, well, we n like. By you the know, way, it's the a great one. Like, <laughs> if, if, I, if they still had like DVDs, and I had a DVD player that uh, could talk to my TV, because I guess that's what the problem is, is uh, Police Squad with yeah. uh, uh, Leslie Nielsen, yeah, and they so did a great fun. thing. Like, they used to make fun of so many tropes. So they were doing this thing. <laughs> Well, you know, remember, you know that sh that camera angle, like when a, when a cop would be leaning down, talking on the intercom, you know, get me this, that, blah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. and they're shooting up like that. Yeah. So as he's doing that, they're doing the whole fucking thing like that, and then they cut to the wide, and he's talking to like a midget, <laughs> and the guy's like, "Okay, boss, I got it." And he fucking walks out. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hilarious. <laughs> the uh, yeah, no, it's just or a little person you're supposed to how say many, now. How many? By the way, I the Halloween movies. They keep doing them. There's a lot. I of know, them. and and the like the, the level love... of anger though. I feel like people like the first one. They like the second one. Then I remember they did Season of the Witch, and everybody. I mean, that's when I was in high school. Well, that movie yeah. can suck my dick. <laughs> Mike Myers wasn't even in the fucking thing, and that just buried that franchise. But then, and it, then it came. It's, well, it's... everything's coming back. That fuck. They rebooted Dexter. Yeah. Didn't they catch him in the other one? No. It was I tapped most... out when he started when he had like a, when they, had, they turned it into like a buddy movie like he was killing people with somebody else. Yeah, Jimmy Smith's. I, that's when I was just like, all right. I yeah. The last season. This is like Midnight Run meets Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. <laughs> the last season of Dexter was like I was like having everyone who's worked on a show. You're like, oh, they just kind of phoned it in. Oh no! When he started hooking up with his sister. When they started having fear, yeah. I was just like, what the fuck? I'm out of here. Yeah. Well, he was married to her in real life, I think. So? Yeah. I'm, that doesn't mean I'm they should bang no, on the I show. Know. No. Well, wasn't it a fake? It was a fake sister. Like, he was adopted. Wasn't he? Listen, I didn't stick around to find out. I yeah. remember watching that episode that was like, that with was... my wife. We both looked at each other like, what the fuck? And I never watched that it again. That was kind of like there was that whole thing of, you know, like there's different kind of topics in stand-up that become really big. There was, that was the year or two where there was, because that was, Game of Thrones had the lesbian story, not lesbian, but like the incest story. And you're like, eh. Oh, they tried to yeah. make that. Maybe this is incest. Yeah, I think incest was. You know, they remember, always do that sitcom, rom com, remember, it's incest com. No, remember in like the the nineties <laughs> or late nineties, there were comedians that would try and work the N word into a joke. Oh yeah, like the Lenny Bruce credibility. They were like, "We're gonna try and mix it." I'm like, "What? What are you doing?" No, there was a few like things that white comics thought if they did it on stage. It made him badass. I, I, I bought into that shit, like trying to do an AIDS joke. AIDS isn't funny. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Watch this. Yeah. Bombed. Yeah. It bombed. It bombed. Well, you know, I think when you're younger, you know, when you first start out, that's why, like, I never, like, you know, comics in, like, their 20s, right into, like, their mid-30s. You're still trying to, I feel, you're trying to figure out, you know, who you are, what you're going to be doing, what you're going to be talking about. So you just try different styles so like yeah, if i see somebody and all of a sudden out of nowhere they're the leather jacket comic i'm like all right i went through that phase everybody goes through that am i the next bill hicks i guess <laughs> i'm not <laughs> no no or you or whoever is hot right now is um you'll see uh up-and-comer comics you're like oh wow there's somebody doing todd berry there's somebody doing mitch hedberg Whoever is, but like whoever is super hot right now. So like the super hot one would be um, people doing Mulaney. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. Oh, is that really? You know, yeah. first time I ever worked with Mulaney, I think the only weekend I ever did, he either opened or featured for me. It's Zany's in Chicago. Yeah. That little, great little room. Yeah. And I don't think I've ever seen somebody as big a no-brainer that that guy's going to be huge. Yeah. He was, I swear to God, 
I, I feel like he was as good as he is now then. He yeah. went on stage, and I was watching him. I was like, this guy sounds like a broadcaster. Like, he's been on TV. He already sounded like he had been on TV for, like, 20 years. Right. Um, I'd never seen anything like that. And, like, you know, there's been people where, you know, they'll book something. I was like, holy shit. You know, so-and-so got that. That's amazing. Him, I, w- I wasn't surprised or anything. I was like, oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. I that makes that. sense. My big surprise was uh, him. I thought, like, uh, he was going to get Weekend Update. I was like, oh, my God, he's, he'd be a fucking monster on that, on oh, SNL. Wow. Yeah. yeah, I thought that I thought that, that was the next move in that whole thing. But yeah. I, think, I think everything worked out for both shows, both yeah. people. Yeah, yeah. So we're fast. talking entertainment here with Jim That's Gaffigan. Right. We're talking movies. It's like I, we got to see the two shot of seeing these two. Like, it looks like a joke <laughs> how white we are. No, it does, yeah. Nobody, nobody would... Look this way. If white. people didn't notice as comedians, they'd see that ATC and they'd be like, all right, Aryan fuck <laughs> time capsule. <laughs> Something. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, this is we're like. Gonna, Aryan, right. Aryan time we're, capsule. We're going to take it back when America look, was great. All right, we're talking uh, Minnesota high school <laughs> hockey. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Um, so. You're here to promote something. I know you. I know I you am. just didn't come out here and to to shoot the shit with me. I am it's flattered. Yeah. No, I, I appreciate am. you letting me come on. It was yeah. a tough decision. Yeah, well, you know, I'm uh, doing a special on Netflix, and uh, I'm. It's coming. Oh, did out. you go home to mommy? I went home. I begged. Is that what, is that what I begged said? Ted to take me back, and he was like, <laughs> "Who are you?" <laughs> no, I. Uh, you were 93 specials ago, and I was like, "Yeah, I would," you know, and so. Uh, we'll see what happens. You know what I mean? I think it'll be all right. You know. Are you touring in 2022? I had a bunch of shows rescheduled that um, will... So it looks like January I'm off. I was supposed to do some shows in the Middle East, but I don't know with the latest thing if everything's going to shut down over there. Oh, all right. Um, international travel, travel-wise. travel But are you going out? Yeah, because I realize that people are just going to do whatever they want to yeah. do. Yeah. So, I mean, at some point, I have bills like anybody else, so I'm just going to do it, and I'm going to do it how I want to do it. And yeah. people, you know, don't like that you got to, you know, be vaxxed or whatever. I totally get it. There's, there's comics doing shows that you don't have to be. They'll go see them. I think it'll all work out, and I think eventually doctors will figure out how to beat this thing like they do everything. Yeah, and you know, it's, and that whole fucking false thing. What's the last thing they fucking? I don't know, HPV. They just fucking knocked that out. Yeah, they can grow an ear in a petri dish. Like I don't think you're really giving these guys the fucking credit yeah. they deserve. And you know, we've always done. You know, like you perform at a, at some casinos, and they won't let people in that are under the age of eighteen or twenty one. You're like, well, that's different than I making people shoot shit into their body. I understand that if you're fucking paranoid and stuff like that. I mean. Pharmaceutical companies also did come up with synthetic heroin and killed a bunch of Americans and nothing happened to them. So I can, I can understand on some level that, that, you know, people, you know, I don't know. I just think the, the thing about me with this thing is that it, because it affects everybody, they don't want to kill everybody. Then they have to dig their own ditches, right? Yeah. I don't know. I just said, fuck it, dude. I use those self-checkout things now. I used to say, hey, fuck this. I'm not working that. I just don't give a fuck anymore. Because I gave a fuck, and giving a fuck is exhausting because no one else comes along. And then you're just standing out there at the front of the Titanic taking that fucking iceberg in the face. You know, I, I put in my time. I gave a fuck. I passed the fucking, you know, I pass it on to some, somebody else can fucking fight that fight. I'm done with it. Yeah. I just want to sit on my back porch and stare at the fucking trees. I really do. Yeah. For about, like, a uh, good three months. I think that would be, do wonders for me. It is amazing how the lockdown, we rented a place in Westchester, and it's how quickly I was like, I just like gardening. Like, it just was, it didn't take long no. for me to be like, I like I like putting my hand in mud. Yeah, I, I didn't think about uh, stand-up, well, the whole lockdown happened in March. I didn't think about it at all in April and May. And as far as I was kind of like, oh, good, I kind of need a break, man. Yeah, I kind of yeah. oh, was yeah. going for 30 straight years. And then by June, I had this really scary thing where, like, I wasn't even thinking about it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, my God, this is how people stop doing stand-up. It's that easy? 
I used to think it was going to be like kicking and screaming. It is as easy as just not doing it for three months and then you just fucking move on yeah. to something else. Because I can tell you, dude, I could literally eat, drink, and smoke myself to death with enough time off. I could literally do it. If I didn't have kids and all that type of shit, yeah. I, I could. There's a 600 pound person in me. I would yeah. be a fucking house. And I would be, lo I mean, it'd be a hell of a way to go out. There's something to be said about that, though, by the way. What's that? Enjoying the way out? Just um, dying at like, 58 and you ate every slice. You want to have a slice of pizza? Yes, I do. Yeah. And just fuck it. You want a cupcake? Ah, I'd love one. You know, got all this salt in me. Why the fuck not? Have you tried this bourbon? No, I haven't. I would, I would love some. <laughs> would you like another glass? I would. Yeah. Do you smoke cigarettes? Just not. I, I do. <laughs> not <laughs> just editing fucking. at all. Not well, I mean, at all. watching me TV, all of these guys would fucking drop at 58, 60. Yeah. And I remember hearing like uh, Jackie Gleason was like that. Yeah. Like his doctor, you got to take the weight up. You got to quit smoking. He was like, look, doc, I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to enjoy life. And the day I fucking drops, the day I drop. And I mean, you know, this, it's your, I, I look at it this way. It's your life. It's also your death. So if that's how you want to fucking do it, then, you know. Uh, you know, uh, go ahead and do it. Same thing. That's how I look at the, this shit now. I mean, if you want to fucking not get vaccinated, you want to risk getting this shit. I don't want to get it. Yeah. I don't want to get the shit. And like, in the, oh, you don't know the long term yeah. side effects I, of the I, vaccine. I, you know, we you, both you, you, know you, somebody that got it twice, and it, it's no fucking joke. It's no. I don't fucking. know who you're talking about. I know a guy who got it twice, and then when I saw him, he was still not wearing a mask. And I was just like, well, dude, uh, yeah, he, I got the antibodies. I go, but dude, there's a new variant out there. It's just like. No, if it's the same guy I'm talking about, he was, I, you know, like I was like, I hope you feel better. And he goes, it is no, like, this is just a text. He's like, it is no joke. He goes, this is like so, and this is round two. So I think it's, I might be thinking. This My heart way. doctor today was talking to me about going on rounds with people on ventilators, just going like, you knew they were going to die. Like they would invert them. Instead of getting bed sores on their ass, they were getting them on their face. It was uh, fucking horrific. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. He goes, yeah. Because he goes, you get the booster yet? I go, uh, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm this far in. Yeah, you know? no, I think, I, I, do you have to wait till six months? Or I don't know. I don't know. I just cut to a week from now. Me and a veteran. <laughs> you don't have to wait. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And it's just like, yeah. And you then don't they, have to wait. I know. And then people get, get vaxxed and then they still fucking get it. So I get vaxxed and I just still wear the fucking uh, mask. I just, yeah. that's what I do. I kind of like wearing the mask though. I, you know, I think it's funny how, like, I, I was on a bus tour and I swear I was the only one with a mask and people would look at me like I was wearing a dress. They're like, what are you doing with the mask? I'm like, there's a pandemic. It doesn't bother me at all. If I'm yeah. the only one wearing a mask, I don't give a fuck. I don't. I actually enjoy it. I enjoy it. And I just know that, oh, you know, I've gone to like fucking NFL football. I just tested negative again. I go to NFL football games. I just fucking wear a mask. Yeah, were you in Green Bay when? Yeah. like I was there the night before. Yeah, I, had a, where, where I, I was in Milwaukee, from? and then I, I I drove up to go to the uh, the Seahawks uh, Packers game. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Great game. It snowed. I was in the lower bowl, like the original place. That's where I wanted to sit. You know, where those people froze their asses off during the Ice Bowl, Cowboys yeah. versus Packers, way back in the day. Who was it? Was it Bart Starr snuck over, or was it uh, Paul Horning? I can't remember. And so you'll go. Uh, you love. You love, you'll go to how many games a year? I don't go the way as much as I used to go because. Uh, and who, who I, did I have, you go I have, with? I have something to go to now. Yeah. Well, you, like, did you go with your opener or whoever happened to open with you? Uh, yeah, I went with uh, Nate Craig and uh, Joe Bartnick. Okay. Club Soda Kenny. Okay. We had a, and then I had all my, uh, my, my buddies from high school were out there. There you go. Yeah, so we had a crew, and we just went out and just were fucking, just laughing our asses off, had a great time, and then we all were just sitting there like, dude, we're at Lambeau Field, man. This is yeah. amazing. Yeah. It was amazing. And, uh, you know, Milwaukee's one of my favorite cities. Yeah, it's amazing. Like, I could I could live there. Like, if I, wa um, if I was more, I don't know, I don't know what, established, I don't know what, how you put it, like, I never quite feel like, you know, those people. Why Milwaukee? Because I spend so much time in Milwaukee. I love it, but like. Because you know, it's Chicago reasons. without all the people, you still could buy something on Lake Michigan and, and be living on a lake. 
I mean, dude, living on a lake. Like, people swim in the ocean are out of their fucking minds. You got to go into a lake. <laughs> Right. You sound like that's something that someone from Wisconsin would say, too. You have to be on a lake. Because there's also other lakes. It, oh, Minnesota is another lake. But uh, this is a little too landlocked. I, but if you get up towards Lake Superior, man, it's just like these people, it's like they live on the moon up there. I did, was it Dem, uh, Duluth? Duluth. Yeah, I did that up there. Uh, granted, like 20 years ago. And it's just like, I mean, you're on your own out there. Like, guns make sense when you're out there. Because it's oh, like, yeah. who the fuck are you going to call? Yeah. It's going to take them 20 minutes to get up your fucking driveway. Your driveway's like a quarter mile long. Everybody's going to be chopped up. You definitely need an SUV, too. Yeah. yeah. You need all of that shit. You need an axe. Yeah. You need those old farming tools. All of that shit. <laughs> <laughs> what are those thrashers? What are the fuck you call those things? Sickle. 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 How old are you when you got your first sickle? Isn't that sort of a rite of passage? Yeah, you get a you get your sickle. When you, I when I got you, it at my you first, Aryan farm boys get we bar at, mitzvah, you get your first sickle. At, <laughs> at, at your first clan <laughs> meeting, they give you a sickle. No, um, no, I you know I did some. I mean, there were there were your were, popsicles shaped like sickles. No, my um, uh, you know I grew up around, but I grew up in kind of a Rust Belt area where there was farmland. It was like where the Rust Belt met the farmland, so there was. How white was it? Were you allowed to eat chocolate ice cream? We were not allowed to eat chocolate ice cream. Just had to be no, vanil- but like vanilla Northwest, bean. Northwest Indiana <laughs> is not as white as the rest of Indiana. So Northwest Indiana is like... So did you have like a breakdance crew? Like it was a, something like that going on? No, I didn't. Okay, sorry. Um, um, but like, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, Gary's African American, but like it was very segregated, like where you grew up, it was very segregated. You don't got to throw Massachusetts under yeah, the bus. You know, it was very segregated, you know, like where you grew up and, um, it's <laughs> <laughs> a lot of ignorance, like in your own family, <laughs> but, uh, but like, you know, there was a lot of Mexican Americans, there's a lot of, uh, there was, it was a mix because of the steel mills, but like then all the steel mills shut down. So there mm-hmm. was a lot of anger. Similar to where you grew up, you know? <laughs> Dude, that's a funny bit. <laughs> where you, you own up to your, your state's uh, uh, mistakes while just shitting on the But, you know, like, I, uh, you know, because I, here's... <laughs> All right, Indochino. All right, personal style can define you as a person and help you express yourself. And the end of the year is a great time to take a look at your closet and decide what's working and what's not. Indochino can get your closet where you want it to be before the new year starts. Or you can gift a wardrobe upgrade to someone you care about with an Indochino gift card. Indochino! Offers completely custom-fitted suits, shirts, casual wear, and more at surprisingly affordable prices get a wardrobe personalized to your style and taste without spending a fortune every piece is made to your exact measurements and you can customize every detail choose everything about your suit including the fabric lapel monogram and statement linings you can create a suit that fits you and your style perfectly give yourself a custom closet revamp with indochino or the gift of great style with an Indochino gift card. Get $50 off any purchase of $3.99 or more by using promo code BURR, B-U-R-R, at Indochino.com. That's $50 off a purchase of $3.99 or more at I-N-D, wait, I-N-D-O-C-H-I-N-O.com. Promo code BURR, I-N-D-O-C-H-I-N-O.com. Promo code BURR, B-U-R-R. It's, you know, shit, I got to get out of here. But I want to talk about this because I also have this theory. Keep, you know, I, got I have this to do theory too. that, like, you know, they always talk about, like, musicians want to be comedians and all this stuff. But, like, I think that all comedians have identity crises or have an identity crisis. What is an identity crisis? So, well, an identity or where they adopt a different identity than who they are. So, like, I remember I used to give Chappelle, uh, not Chappelle, a tell shit. Like, I'm like, you know, like, you're from Great Neck. You're, you're not, like, from, like, the Lower East Side in the 1960s. You're, like, a nice Jewish boy from Long Island. And the thing is, is there's no one more authentic than Dave Attell. That's, don't misinterpret that. But there is something about this, you know, like, I'm an upper middle class guy, but because I'm Indiana because I'm so white bread looking. I'm much more Midwestern 
than anything. Do you know what I mean? It's like there's so like if you go around. Well, that's the different. That's different. That's somebody looking at you and then judging you, saying you're that. Yeah. 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 But you know, like. Oh, dude! I remember one time this comic got mad at me. She got mad at me. Why? She found out my dad was like a dentist. Yeah. She goes, "Oh, so your your whole ex bullshit." Like, cause she looked at me like I think she watched Good Hill, Good uh, Goodwill Hunting or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just like, first of all, I never fucking said you just looked at me and thought that was that, and then and then also then her idea of like she was still way off. Well, she and was also, still way off because then she thought, oh, you fucking, you know, fucking trust fund kid. Yeah. It's like, no, I paid for my college. Yeah, I tried. I, I did, you know, I fucking had a job from third grade on, you know, uh, like I'm not getting into my whole family fucking I, history, but it was just like, it, it, I mean, some things could have been easier, but, you know, you got to right, make the right fucking moves. And if you don't. Well, and I also like I tried to, you know, this is just like another kernel of and some of it is if you, you, you should do that finding your roots thing. With Lewis Gates, it's amazing, Doctor Lewis Gates. It is unbelievable. You should do it. I always feel find the white people are boring. Yeah, well, of course it is compared say, to. Oh, my dad was a baker. Wow, that's no, something. But, that's no, amazing. But, but oh, I'm sorry, my great grandfather. And then I saw the one with uh, uh, Pharrell on it. Oh, I and they were like, one. on this next page, we're going to show you the white man that owned your ancestors, dude. And he had to walk <laughs> away. And then it was funny, though, intercutting with this white guy. Who's just going like? Oh, yeah, yeah. You and then they uh, this uh, she you was gotta watch really into making Silver flags. War. She you gotta made, watch. It's over because uh, you gotta I don't. watch. You could just tell me what happens. You could save me. Well, 80 it's hours about of my life. it's about it's about how um, the understanding of the Civil War uh, is has shaped everyone. So, like people, you know, small African American communities in Mississippi don't learn about it, and. People in the Northeast hear a different version of it, and then like white uh, people from the suburbs of Atlanta hear a different thing, and nobody hears. You know, you know, is it constructive to say the flat-out truth about every detail, or are we harping on it, or is it yeah, constructive? The, you, it becomes you know it I mean? becomes perspective, though. Well, I think it's necessary. No, I'm saying yeah. it's saying it's like if we're watching the game and we see a call and it's on your team, I'm like good call, you're like bad call. So like, how do you find out who's telling the truth with the, that level of prejudice involved? Yeah, but I think that there is like the the revisionist history uh, of portraying the Civil War as like a battle of states' rights is dishonest when it was about. Slavery. I mean, look, there's two Dakotas because the South wanted to have a certain number of slave states. That's the only reason why there's two Dakotas. This wasn't in the documentary. Is that they were like, then they're both going to be, then we're having these two states. It's like, it's not like people looked at the Dakota territories and said, oh, we need two. We need Bob to have his own state and Sam to have his own state. Right. It was all politics. And it was, you know, it was this. It's a complex, ugly thing that we're still dealing with. No, that, that's, this, no, I, I, that is, that you know is what I mean? fascinating. Yeah, that is fascinating. Yeah. Do you know uh, that building in New York? Do you know why that's called the, the Dakota? No. Because when they built it, there was literally nothing between it and where everybody was settled down around Wall Street. So there was a joke that you were going, they used to call that part of New York the Dakotas. Oh, so my they, God. They just really? named it the Dakota. Yeah. That's what I heard. Oh, that's wow. I, heard. I don't know if that's true. That's crazy. You know? All right. If you just said, oh, wow, it's interesting, I would have gone with it. And then you were like, is that true? I'd be like, oh, fuck. I heard that a long time ago. I don't no, know. No, I've heard a lot of stuff. You know, you know Bowery? Uh, uh, supposedly, hobo is short for the people that live around Houston and Bowery. Hobo. Right. Isn't that interesting? I thought you were going to say where, where the word hobo came from. That is where the word hobo came from. Houston and Bowery. Oh. Because the Bowery's always been kind of a shit show. A shit show. Yeah. All right, I got one from you. Do you know uh, right where the Flatiron Building is? There's that park. Yeah. And you look, there's like those three buildings, giant buildings. And one of them looks like the top was literally cut off. Yeah. That building was supposed to be bigger than the Empire State Building. Uh, but then the, the Depression hit and they ran out of money. So they said, fuck it. And they just put a roof on it. Oh, wow. 
Triangle shirtwaist fire. Probably oh, what? That's brutal. That's, that's a brutal one. That's really brutal. Yeah. Have you been to the Tenement Museum in New York? You should check brutal. that out. Do you get tuberculosis on the way through? No, it is no <laughs> joke. It's, you know, no, it's, it's like, brutal. They, if you lived in New York, you're like, this is actually an apartment I lived in in the 90s. But No, uh, I did. I lived in a fucking yeah. railroad apartment. Like, yeah. And um, I but, mean, dude, I, like, you could literally drop your wallet between the fucking floorboards in some yeah. areas. Yeah, I used to heat my apartment by turning on the water. There was no tub when I moved into my apartment. How about no the tub, tub in shower. the kitchen? Yeah, that's... The tub in the, the kitchen, They had taken yeah. it out, so I had to put one back in. I had to put a tub in and then, you know, the thing for shower. Do you know how to do that? A shower? Yeah, I know how to shower. No, do you know how to put a tub in? Did you put it do in? Do I not? No, Did I didn't do, do it. Oh, I was going to say that was amazing. See, I was buying into the Midwest guy. No, no, I'm not You're handy at all. Without... I guess that makes me half a man, but that's all right. There's somebody to do it. There is. There is somebody. There's somebody. To but do it. in the great apocalypse, you're going to be ready. I'm not going to be ready. I don't know how to fix shit. You don't? I thought you were a handy guy. I can't put it in a fucking tub. I mean, if I, you give me some YouTube videos, I can figure a lot of shit out. If there's video of somebody showing me how to do it. Yeah. What I can do is I can fly you to safety in a helicopter. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. That's I mean, amazing. I can drop you off. I don't know how to start a fire once we get there. Do you, t <laughs> do, you, <laughs> do you, how often do you helicopter to shows? Um, Never. It's stressful. It's stressful. It's stressful because. And you do you not helicopter at night or people do? I'm saying helicopter. Uh, that's. Uh, do you go <laughs> helicoptering? <laughs> <laughs> do you guys do you, helicopter? Do you, do you summer in France? Um, do you helicopter? Uh, it's it's. I don't like flying at night. Yeah. Um, there's just if you had an engine failure and you're over like, and there's no street lights or anything down there, yeah. you don't know if that's flatland, water, trees. You just there's just too much shit. Um, so I fly, like, I'll fly at night if I'm with, if I have a co-pilot, I'll do that. Yeah. And I've done that and I've flown to gigs, you know, to Vegas and, uh, some down San Diego. I've flown up to, uh, San Francisco. I mean, that was a blast. You, you helicoptered there? I helicoptered there. Yeah. Rented a yeah. helicopter and then, uh, we flew around Alcatraz, San Francisco, uh, Golden Gate Bridge and came back. It was fucking amazing. That was amazing. But like to just like, you know, they have like tours that do that too. But like you, but you flying yeah, it. Yeah, but yourself. I'm I'm flying it. Yeah. And so, what is the helicopter? <laughs> when you, when you, that was one of the steps. Be like saying to Tom Brady, you know, you know, you could just sit and watch somebody play football. <laughs> no, no. Well, <laughs> rather than like, having the rush of being grandiose, but what like when I that was, that was when I fly a, a helicopter, I'm like Tom Brady of air that aviation. Was such an, I am. <laughs> I am. <laughs> the, that is some Tom Brady shit. To get in a fucking <laughs> helicopter, fly around fucking Alcatraz and, and Gold Lake Bridge is fucking some Tom Brady shit if you know how to do that. It is. It's because it of the, uh, the wind current and all that? Because of the wind current when I I'm helicoptering? <laughs> when you, I love no, how I'm Tom, exhausting you. No, Brady. No, you're not. You're being a cunt. <laughs> You're being a cunt, and I'm taking the bait. So me, I'm, I know how to get out of. I'm like I the Tom Brady of like eating deep dish pizza. Um, no, but like you're the Tom Brady of throwing your opener under the bus. <laughs> you're like Peyton Manning. We, have, we have protection issues. How is how is how is that? Uh, how is that throwing someone? Oh, you have a great metabolism. That's like throwing someone under the bus. That's not what you said. What I say? Huh? You go fucking back and watch it, because you're just going to disagree with me. You're like, oh, that fucking guy can fucking eat anything. <laughs> he can. That's what you were I saying. I think that's a compliment. But all right. So, all right, you're helicoptering. It had nothing to do with talk. <laughs> you were justifying the shape that you're in. That's what I'm, you were doing. Uh, there you I, go. Make I that like, noise. You literally moved four inches. I have a it sounded huge like you were picking up a fucking, fucking home head. safe. You know, when I'm dead in a week, you're going to feel bad that you were mean to me. I won't. Yeah, you will. I won't. I know on, on underneath that hard I'm exterior a, is a little boy. I'll send the whitest lilies I can find a to your wake. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. I got to get out of here. I got to go and do something. Yeah, call Todd Glass and make him feel bad about himself. Unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, one of the honestly, one of the most lovable guys I've ever met in my life. I know. It's impossible. I thought before this podcast it was impossible to hate Todd, Todd Glass, but you really found an angle. 
I love you. You know, I love this. This I good old fashioned. There's there's some guilt trip coming at me. I didn't know your family. You were raised Catholic, huh? It's, I'm feeling some of that guilt, some of that Catholic no, you guilt. Know, that was all bullshit. You just pulled Catholic, that out of your ass. Catholic guilt. What oh. does Catholic guilt have to do with the fact that you trash Todd Glass? Guilt, 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 guilt. So your great grandfather killed Alexander Wait, Hamilton. Just out of, out of curiosity, he. Just, how would I have any guilt about what you said about and Todd I'm the Glass? The motherfucker who killed him. What? How would I have any guilt about what you said about Todd Glass? Like, how were you applying that? No, I'm applying you trying to give me guilt about this Todd Glass thing. That's how we assert power. A lot oh, of people don't right. even realize that I am Bill's therapist. And, you know, you might as well just come out with it and tell people that I'm your therapist. Yeah, that's why I'm still so fucked up. Because he's never he's not really board certified. I'm not going to fix you, Bill. You're you have to fix, fix yourself. yourself. <laughs> Been saying that for fucking 20 now, years. Now, I believe our time is up, and I, I wanted to talk to you about this raising is what you're our doing. rate. What you're doing is putting yourself in a position of power on my podcast. You think so? Which is really, really is that rude? It just shows me how small that you are as a person. Is oh that why God. you eat so much? To now, try to see appear bigger now, Bill, than how you feel did about you yourself? you find, after you were being generous to this childhood friend of yours, the early year of comedy, did you find yourself pushing him away at the end? Did you find that? I don't know what you're talking about. A little about. bit. A little bit. Oh, you're talking about you. Oh, yeah. is this still about you? This is when I know I need to get a new therapist, when you're weaving yourself into the narrative of my life. Yeah. So how often do you go? Once a week? You don't care. I do care. I should go back to therapy. Dude, you you could commit a murder. There's a lot of anger, right? There really is. Who has and more I anger? Know, I know. Me or you? First of all, it, it what really counts is who's scarier. Dude, there's no way I'd ever let you get those farm hands on me. <laughs> <That's> just <laughs> farm hands. Yeah, you guys can literally fucking change a tire. Look at how beautiful I look. You could change a tire with like a crescent wrench. Just fucking come up and just just fucking turn it like that. I gotta I'm get like, like that. I gotta get that piece of pipe. Give me a bunny to <laughs> hold it. I wanna play a I wanna play a murderer. Did you used to something. play chicken in your in your souped up cars? You know, in the high school in the back road? Um, no, that Some was, girl go, that's Wee! called American Graffiti. They, that's, they called Am that's, the be that's in Greece. Weren't you in that? I was. I was <laughs> in that. All right. We, can, I w we should have another uh, session where we talk about how we love acting. Because I think we both love acting. Yeah, we do. It would have been nice if you found common ground earlier in this episode instead of attacking see, see, me. Now going you're, after see, my religion, you fucking now, piece of shit. Are you Protestant? I'll fucking bury you in that fucking... Behind that sign, if I find out you're Protestant, Bill, we do I not think, get along. I think Will you you're, stop with your fucking acting like you're not an angry person with your little fucking I, voice there. You know what? I think we're going to find out. I'm not saying. Do you know you and Mario Batali have the exact same hands? What are you talking about? I used to love watching Mar Molto Mario when he, he would make the yeah. pasta with the well method. I got to know his hands. He yeah. has those fucking sausage fingers. Yeah. Are you attacking my hands? I'm a hand model. No, like <laughs> when we do, for when they beef, do genetic research, they're going to find out that like your ancestors would be mean to Catholics. And then the only way they escaped, uh, like, you know, like your ancestors <laughs> did January 6th. That's what we're going to find out. <laughs> oh, my, my third cousins? <laughs> Aaron Burr shot... Uh, then, you know, um, those people on January 6th were heroes. They were, you know, look, I, they're not coming to my shows. Um, Listen, I'll tell you this. That guy with the <laughs> buffalo head, yeah. as much as everybody made fun of him, he was about 15 minutes away from being a face on our money for the next 200 years. Right? Like how, <laughs> how fucking close they came. I, they just had no plan. It's, they got in there. They did it. People a, were not ready can i can i point something it was like out? A, i don't know if i brought this a, up our fucking nation's capital got taken over by a tailgate that's what it looked like it looked like a bunch of people tailgating decided to rush a governmental building and no is, one was ready for it it is you know what's so funny is the uh during the whole trump administration where they were like 
talking about like you know Hillary's going to jail next week Hillary's going to go to jail they're going to put and and everyone was like yeah that's ridiculous and then uh, all the other people were like once Trump's out of uh, office he's going to jail all the Trump people are going to jail and all the people on the right are like yeah right and we're both idiots because it's like, n- there's no consequences. Like, I don't think anything's going to happen, except for like... The- I just like those people when they, w- they wouldn't let them on the planes. They're like, they're calling me a terrorist. <laughs> it's just like, are you aware of what you just did? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is funny. We went in there and we wanted to kill Nancy Pelosi. And they were mad that we were going to do that. They were mad that... Yeah, that's like when I used to booze and drive. I got pulled over. They're saying I'm a drunk driver. <laughs> Buddy, you blew a fucking one They're one saying nine. I have pale skin, and it's not <laughs> fair. But having said that, I don't judge the right for that any more than I judge the left when you see lunatic left. It's just the loonies are what the news pays attention to because the audiences are so splintered because there are a million things to watch out there that they actually have to give these people screen times because everybody slows down to watch a train wreck. I think 85% of people are in the middle hoping the people on the extreme right and left are going to fucking settle down. That's what I think. Yeah. I don't, I don't think so. You didn't I like think, that because that sounded smart. Uh, d- uh, I think that there's... Uh, I think that uh, comparing you know, Trump stuff to um, Biden's a false comparison. I think it's a completely, I don't care if, I don't care if Biden, Biden's corpse was in charge. I can't tell if you're doing a bit. I'm not kidding. I I would rather have Biden's corpse. I didn't say anything about fucking that fucking warmonger with dementia. I was talking about extreme left people. Yeah, but what I, oh, extreme, yeah, no, but I'm just saying that like, that's what I'm talking about. It's, People want to end your career because you used the wrong fucking pronoun because a new pronoun came out three days ago. Those fucking lunatics. Well, that I just think that, like, yeah, that, but, like, I mean, I also believe that... Oh, Jesus. We brought up politics. Now we're going to start arguing. All right. No, no. I think that, like... Is that all right, Nicorette? Right, huh? it's, my, it's my friend, Nicorette. Look at me. These titties are nice. Um, all right. I got to go. <laughs> I got to go. I wish I didn't have to go. We could do, like, do a four-hour like, one. Do you chew, like, those are, like, uh, instead of Nicorette, is that, like, filled with, like, sausage grease? So you I get wish it was. off of bangers and mash? I wish it was. I wish it was. All right. All right. Thank I you, I had Bill. a fucking blast talking to you. This is great. This was great. Yeah, I, I could literally it. do like another five hours with you. We should sh- we, we should, should break just, a record. We should start shitting on each other. We should this do is, like a... Tw- what's the longest one? We'll do 12 we'll hours. White on white crime. <laughs> white. Two white... Uh, the, it'll be an event. An event. Two straight white guys talking. <laughs> <laughs> Explaining things. All right. Well, this... Uh, Jim Gaffigan, Thank your you. special comes out on Netflix on what day? December 21st. December 21st. There wow. Look at you trying to steal Jesus' birthday from him. Right? Yeah. Who Isn't do you think a, you are? I don't know. Jesus. I'm just a humble man. Humble man. You are. You're an everyman. I'm an everyman. I'm just down to earth. You're that one of those, you're Sears Roebuck. You know? I'm down to earth. Riding lawnmower. I'm, you know? Just down to earth. That's what you are. A regular guy. That's he, what I, that's he, what he, he's he's going to cut all this off. This is what I love about you. I always thought you were so relatable. You think I'm relatable? Yeah. I don't think there's anything special about you. You just come off so common to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Did you find yourself pushing Jim away at the end? I did. I was pushing him away at the end of the podcast. And why was that? Because I'm afraid he was going to get too close. And that I would appear weak by being friends with a guy who had emotions. Uh, I think you're, first of all, you're putting yourself up on a pedestal like you're not fucked. You're just projecting. I'm like, I'm like the Tom Dude, you're Brady the most, of helicoptering. You're, you're like the most <laughs> walled off person i said that was some tom brady hello. shit i didn't hello. say wait 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 now 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 hello kettle pod pod kettle oh god could you not could you at least come up with something that bet, 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 bet. <laughs> i'm the most walled off there's all these comedians jim and bill both have boundaries that they can't seem to work through i don't know jim i've known you for 25 years i still have no idea what you think or feel about anything i don't know how to feel I need help. <laughs> I just don't know how to be honest. <laughs> I don't even you're know. You're so walled off. You're even mocking <laughs> me saying how fucking walled off you are. I have the same anger as you. I know you do. 
I said flying a helicopter for the record is some Tom Brady shit, and it is. I didn't you say know, it was, like, I didn't you, say Can I point something out? Flying the me. you're like flying the helicopter, like people that are like use my pronoun correctly, use my helicopter pronoun correctly. Oh, you're gonna oh, you're gonna, oh, yeah, you're gonna throw me in that barrel? Oh, you're gonna. Oh yeah, motherfucker! You're gonna throw me in that barrel? I'm like, um, it's you know, it's some honest ribbing, and we'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> All, right, All right, that's I it. Go. Jim Gaffigan, I love you, brother. Thank you. Thank All you. Right. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Anything Better NFL Preview Show, sponsored by, as always, Bet MGM, the most reliable name in betting, the most reliable lines, guys. Uh, as you know, the Anything Better podcast has teamed up a while back at the beginning of the season with Bet MGM. Okay, and now we have we have deals for you. We have money makers for you, uh, although we haven't hit any Monday night specials lately, so I don't want to get crazy. But um, we'll be using the lines uh, to make all of our picks, and we'll have special offers for our listeners each week. Okay, if you haven't signed up to BetMGM yet, use promo code BURR, B-U-R-R, and you'll get $100 for free after placing your first $1 bet. Here's how it works. You download the BetMGM app. Very simple. You sign up using bonus code BURR, B-U-R-R. Very simple. Okay, place your first $1 money line bet on any NFL game. That's four fucking quarters. $1. Okay, you're going to receive $100 in free bets immediately after placing your bet, regardless of the outcome. Just make sure you use bonus code BURR, B-U-R-R, when you sign up. Guys, we are going into week 16. Um, unfortunately, dude, these are like preseason games because of all the fucking COVID going on, dude, it, and with playoff implications. So it's pretty nuts. Um, oh, what are they, a bunch of guys are out? Oh, dude, players, teams have eight to six, six to eight players out, starting quarterbacks. I mean, it's, uh, it's fucked up. Um, Okay, so last week, Bill, once again, Bill goes 500, keeping his record four games over 500. Bill is uh, two and two last week at 33, 26 and one. Uh, I am 32 and 28, four games above 500, went three and one last week. Um, and we are separated now by a game and a half with three weeks to go. We missed the Monday night special uh, again. So we have to regroup, man. We came close a couple of times. We hit it once. We're going to have to regroup and take that one a little more. It's hard now with, with all of these guys being fucking out and all of that shit. Plus, I got to be watching more football if I'm going to do well on this, but I just don't have the fucking time. All right. Uh, well, here we go. I, who, I, did, I had no idea the Rams front four was the way it was, man. They are impressive. All right, let's go. You go first. Um, no, it is an even week, so you go first. All right, I'm going to tell you this. Paul Verzi actually said to me, Bill, you know what? If you don't take the Patriots worth the first fucking take, I'm going to take them. And you know what I'm going to say, Paul? I'm going to defer it. I'm going to take the ball in the second half. I fucking hate this game. Um, you know what's I funny? I absolutely hate this game, Paul, because we already beat the Bills, and we beat the Bills because it was like 50. You listen to me when I'm talking to you, motherfucker. I'm listening. I got to get Rolling at game. your goddamn phone. I got to get the games. It Go was ahead. 50 not fucking wins. We threw the ball fucking two to three times. It was a complete anomaly of a game. The Bills, the light switch was on. It's off, and I feel like it's on again. I have no fucking idea what's going to happen. I, I love what the Patriots did last week after getting jumped on. Mac Jones throws two fucking picks, and then he settles down, has the poise to come back, scare the shit out of him, gambled on a play, and, and gave up a big run. I'm staying away from it. Uh, I'm going to bet the team I should have bet last week, the New York Jets, um, getting one at home against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Wow. Um, well, you know what's funny is I'm not taking the Patriots because I looked at that game after saying that, and I'm afraid of how desperate the Bills are, so I'm not taking that game. But speaking of desperation. Sure it wasn't what I just told you? It's definitely not what you just told me. I was going to tell you. I am not so. Not taking that you game. You sent me a warning text yesterday. You were taking that game. Was it a warning or was it a cool fucking friend thing to do? That's what I thought it was. Oh, taking your friend's team is not a cool thing on any how you slice it. Well, I that's why I said to you, but here's what I'm doing. No, what no, 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 no. Let's see. That's not you just made yourself the hero in there, Paul. I don't think I like that. <laughs> I make myself First of all, you already stepped on my toes a couple of times taking the Patriots. 
<laughs> no, you're going on a wonderful run without calling me. And you can hey, just let you know, I'm, if you know, if you don't fuck your wife tomorrow, I'm going to fuck her. That's basically <laughs> what you did. <laughs> it's taking a little far. Um, dude, the Pittsburgh Steelers are playing for their lives. They're getting they're playing seven and, for their playoff lives. They're playing for their lives. They're getting they're getting seven and a half points against the Chiefs. This is a fucking crazy game where it could be a blowout. But I just feel that the fact that they are in Pittsburgh, I believe they're in Pittsburgh. Let me make sure of that. If they're on the bottom, they're in Pittsburgh. Yes. Um, they are in. They are in Pittsburgh. No, they're not. They're in Kansas City getting seven and a half. Motherfucker. <sighs> you know what? Tyreek Hill is out with COVID. Fuck it. I'm taking the Pittsburgh Steelers getting seven and a half, playing for their lives. Ben Roethlisberger's, this is his last year, and I think his last year he's going to go out in the playoffs, not in the regular season. I'm taking the Steelers with seven and a half against the Chiefs. All right, I got to ask, is, is, is fucking uh, is Aaron Rodgers playing? Yes. How about the uh, how about Baker Mayfield? Is he playing? Mm, I don't know that. I don't know. All right. Yeah, this is this week is just stupid. I'm going to take the Green Bay Packers given seven and a half at home against the Cleveland Browns. No Baker uh, for my second pick. No Baker. No, no Baker Mayfield. They're only getting seven and a half points. I don't As like of right now, it says he's out. All right. Go ahead. Okay. I am going to take, wait, who did Bill okay, just take? Actually competing information. So uh, six hours ago, they said no. 36 minutes ago, they said they anticipate Baker to play Saturday against the Packers. Uh, but it, yeah, so his quarantine expires on Friday. So that's subject to change. But at, as of right now, it looks like it's a 51% chance he's going to play. Okay. All right. Everybody's telling me, Paul, every time you take – my San Francisco 49ers, they win. Take it, take it, take it. But they're playing, <laughs> they're playing the Titans tonight, and I'm scared of the game. Um, I think what I'm gonna have to do is I think I'm gonna have to take <sighs> well, now why are you afraid of that game? I'm afraid of that game. Henry is out. I know Henry is out, but um Henry seems like the 49ers are different on the road than they are at home. The yeah, Titans have a win at home. The tight the, the Titans lost. Titans just lost, and they need a win to keep up. I don't like the game. I'm not gonna touch it. I'm gonna take the I'm gonna take the Chargers. You fucking asshole. God damn it, you do that to me every fucking week. I'm gonna take the Chargers over the Texans, minus 10. That's a gift. That's a fucking win. You motherfucker. God damn it. Why did I say the Jets first? You never would have taken the fucking Jets. It was such a stupid move on my part. Dude, I've taken the Jets, I think, once this year. But, no, the Jets have COVID issues. There's all fucking – because Jet fans are bitching in New York going – Then let me ask you a question. What in the fuck am I betting on here? Emblems? If everybody's <laughs> out. You're betting on colors and logos, Bill. <laughs> ah, you bastard. That was my fucking that – that, that's my gift of the week, minus 10. Oh, there's a jinx right there. <laughs> huh? There's a fucking Texans. No, I'm, I'm saying that out of fucking kicking myself for not going first. I mean, not, not taking that first. Um, uh, you bastard. I hate all of these games. Um, I am going to take. I guess Tom Brady didn't score any points last week, huh? Um, I don't even call them the Buccaneers. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I believe in the Rams. I believe oh, in the Rams. Shit. Minus three against the Vikings. Even though it's in Minnesota, I don't believe in those fucking guys. Oh, fuck. If it's any consolation, that was my next pick. Uh, yeah, I, my, my thing, I was, I was going Chargers. I was going Rams. I was going Jets. And then I had one other one. Green oh, you were all Hollywooded up. You were going all Hollywood, New York, all the big markets. Yeah, uh, and then the mom and pop Green Bay. And then the mom and pop Green Bay. All right, so you're taking the Rams? Yep. 
So that's my third one. So I got I got to find one more in here, Paul. That isn't a fucking COVID crazy. Paul, leaving San Francisco high and dry. I hope you don't got a fucking punchline day coming up. Those people will be leaning on you. Oh, dude. <laughs> uh, dude, there's a dude, the, uh, the, the three games I'm scared of the bills, the Niners and the fucking, um, the Colts, dude, the Colts are plus one. Oh my God, dude. Arizona is flailing. Yeah. What's going on with them? I was winning money on them all year. I'm taking the Tampa Bay Buccaneers minus 10. That's a poly pick. I got two picks minus 10 against the Carolina Panthers. I think uh, Brady and them are fu- just got beat up, but not beat up, but they just lost nine, nothing to the saints. Always good to see Tom pissed off in a press conference and take him the next week. So I'll take the Bucks minus 10 against the Panthers. I like that. I'm going to take the Saints plus one and a half Monday night football at home against the Dolphins. That's a great pick. Uh, if, if fucking, you know, if anybody's playing out there. Let me, what, I, was that Kamara kid out now that I just took it? <laughs> I got one more, Andrew. Okay. So I have the... Who do I have? I have the Chargers. I have the Steelers. Kind of an asshole picks the Jets first. <laughs> I was actually surprised. You know, you did because the Jaguars stink. It's probably not a bad pick. And no, Jack it's Wilson- a great pick, but I knew you were going to go with this, the fucking Chargers, and I figured you were also going to take the Packers. To try to get into your head a little bit, so I was just like, I usually don't like your picks, so I'm like, I like two teams Paul likes this week. I hope he doesn't take them. And then my dumb ass says the Jets. Paul, this is why I didn't do well in school. I'm not good with math. All right, dude. I got one more. Give me a second here. Teddy Bridgewater. I hope he's okay. He got carted off. He got carted hey, what off. What are the- you thinking about uh, Bill's Patriots? I don't like it. Yeah, I have no idea. Like, they played each other. It was, a, it was a fucking stupid game. Guy kicks his on the Bills. The guy kicks a fucking 30 yard field goal. It's good and gets blown sideways. It's not a football game. It's a natural disaster. Oh, fuck. <laughs> so you just pulled a knife out of your leg. Because, oh. Dude, these three games are really tough. This Colts Cardinals game is tough, dude. Yeah, you gotta like, you know what it is about them? They're on the ropes, and I'm worried like they're gonna do that last right. You know, you ever see that in UFC when a guy looks like he's going down, the guy runs in, and then he fucking gives him a knee, and the guy goes down. Um, I'm Colts taking got a hell of a running game. I'm taking the Indianapolis Colts, man. I want to see. Listen, if Carson Wentz is gonna do it, he's gonna do it now. This is his time. It's a prime time game. I'm going to see if he's going to keep running that kid, Jonathan Taylor, that running back. I'm going to take the Colts. I'm sorry, Niners fans. I just, you know what? It's too, it's tonight. It's too soon. I've been running around all day. I can't take the pressure. I'm going to go. That's I'm going funny. To, I'm going I to feel like the Titans are fading. Both teams scare the shit out of me, and I hate the line. It's such a perfect line on the road for San Francisco. Give me the Colts, Carson Wentz in the running game. There you go. So what's Dude. going out there in the NFC West? Like the Arizona Cardinals had it. Now they might not even make the playoffs. Like if they lose this week, they might lo- lose the – not even make the playoffs. Oh, you're scaring me. Should I change my pick? No, I'm taking the Colts, man. Um, That's because you're positive, Paul. You believe in people. You always think when their back's against the wall, they're going to be like you and they're going to step it up. Well, that's what winners do, and I think that a team that wants to make the playoffs needs to do it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, all right. So there you guys oh, have it. Oh, man, that fucking charger bet. Oh, wait a minute, Bill. It's time for the what? Oh, uh, let the Monday night special. Who we got Monday night, Andrew? With some money for you. We you. got the, we got this. I hate when I bet Monday night and then I got to do Monday night special. I feel like it fucks with my, makes me question my bet here. I'll roll with you with the Saints, though. I like that. You want to take the Saints on the money line? Saints on the money line. Who the fuck is their quarter? Is it Tyrod oh, that, Taylor? No, dude. That no, Tyrod Taylor. That's Joe hilarious. Flacco. No, uh, Von Strock. Tyrod Taylor's with the David Tex- Woodley. No, that kid. What's it? Taysom Hill. 
That kid had a crazy game last week. That kid's like a wide receiver, running back, quarterback. He's like a fucking po- fantasy. Which is what the machine. 49ers, I mean, the uh, Saints have. This is going to be a great game. No, that's what I mean. That's the, he's the Saints. No, 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 no. I'm saying who do who do the uh, oh, Dolphins you're talking have? about uh, Tua Tua to Tama Malopa. I totally fucked that. Sounds up, like a yeah. UFC fighter to me. Um, All right. Okay, so the Monday night special. Uh, Alvin Kamara rushes one, maybe wait, catches one. Wait, is Kamara playing with COVID? Is is Kamara in? This we need to know because. This is what we need to know. Do da do da. Um, as of an hour ago, he might end up as a backup. All right, no, dude. Don't... What the? F- what am I betting? What the fuck am I doing here? Yeah, I mean, we're... I could have looked at all. I'm too fucking busy to look at this COVID shit. God damn it! Okay, Kamara's backup. Ah, uh, what do we got? Who's? Who do we got? Ra- Raymond James. Dude, I'm scared. John Stevenson? Dude, if I go 0 4 this week, it's going to be devastating. I'm taking too many points. Dude, 0 4 does not fucking count this week. Nothing counts this week. If fucking everybody's got the sniffles. Yeah, anything this week. This week is called unpredictable. This should have been our bye week. <laughs> um, let's do let's do what's his name getting a touchdown pass. Tua? He's got the mumps. He's not playing. <laughs> Can you imagine, getting, dude, you fucking getting married and you're going to Vegas on your bachelor party and you want to bet the NFL this week and you got uh, this fucking COVID shit you got to deal with? Oh, my God. Oh, Who's my playing? God. What? He's playing. He's playing. Who is? Tua. Tua's playing. All right. So Tua throws a touchdown. Is that the Dolphins guy? Yeah. Or do you want to do Tua throws a pick? You know what, Paul? You're going to have to do the Monday night special because I fucking bet New Orleans Saints because I'm not going to be, I don't want anything good for the Dolphins to happen. All right. So let's do this. All right. I'll do, I'll, 37 all right. and a half. Huh? 37 and a half is the over on this. You know I what? It's, it's going over. You know what? It's in New Orleans. Let's do, let's do a Miami fumble recovered by the Saints. That's right. helped. That's been good all year. A Miami fumble recovered by the Saints. We'll take the Saints in the money line, and we'll take the over. How about that? I think that? the over just because I think it's just going to be a wild game. Okay. So that'll there be a defense. Defense recovers fumble recover if if they, we can get Saint, that. But but BetMGM wants us to be specific. So the Saints get a, a fumble recovery. Um, all right, so here's everybody. So there's by no the com- way, dude, you called the Bills last week. One of you, one of you thinks you said was going to happen exactly. You said it was going to be a bloodbath. I mean, they won by like 15 or whatever, right? Um, did they? Yeah, did they? They came back. You won that one, right? You talked all this shit going there. They're, you know, good team coming over the road. Oh yeah, that yeah, is yeah. Going to be an absolute yes. bloodbath. I mean, yeah, they kicked the. Sh- I mean, they. It was like 30-something to, to 15, right? I'm getting real tired of coming real close. I'm getting tired of coming close to 4-0 and two weeks in a row. I'm getting tired of it. I need it, but whatever. I'll take 3-1. and one. I'm here. willing to bet the side you're not going to do it. You've come close too many fucking times. I know. You've gone 6-2 and two the last few weeks. The odds are against you. Th- but yeah. with COVID, Paul, <laughs> with, that, with that fly in the ointment, you could possibly do it. Um, but you've gotten fucked. On a cup. I'll tell you with that fucking game I was watching the other night, Seattle or something like that. Uh, what the fuck game was I watching? There was just some blatant pass interference. They weren't calling shit. I know. I saw that game. I did. I got fucked. The Washington football team I almost had. My Giants screwed me too. Though. What, what can you do? Listen, here's a Monday night special so there's no confusion. The Miami Dolphins are going to put it on the floor. It's going to be a recovery by the Saints. We're taking the Saints with the money line, and we're taking the over. There you go. No confusion. It's Diving the Monday. Over the top. I think it's going to be a wild one. As Bill calls it, it's the Monday night special making what for people? Making money for you. Uh, <laughs> we only hit two out of 16. <laughs> it's but tough. that's better than most shows. Well, there you have it, guys. 
That has been the week 16 preview. This is the Christmas edition. So we wish you all happy betting. Merry Christmas. We hope you make money so you could get those Christmas gifts. And as you guys know, uh, please join up. We, we really, really love working with uh, BetMGM. They've been oh, amazing. The best. Um, if you the haven't best. signed up. You know up, what? They're there every week. They're there every Bet week. BetMGM's there every week. They're not questionable. No. <laughs> <laughs> BetMGM executives aren't getting COVID. That's uh, right. <laughs> you can depend on those guys. Unlike my dad. <laughs> If you haven't signed up yet, very easy, very easy. You download the BetMGM app to sign up using bonus code BURR, B-U-R-R, guys. Couldn't be more easy. Here's what's even better. You risk $1 of your money on any any money line game for the NFL. $1. Four quarters, you're going to receive $100 in free bets immediately after placing your bet. Just make sure you use bonus code BURR when you sign up. Bet MGM, man, the best lines in the game, most reliable name in the betting game. There you go. This has been a week 16 preview. Um, we're coming down to the wire the last three weeks. Enjoy football, everybody, and we will see you next time. Visit betmgm.com for terms and conditions. 21 years of age or older to wager. Arizona, Colorado, D.C., Iowa, Indianapolis, Louisiana, Michigan, Missouri, New Jersey, Nevada, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia, Wyoming, Washington only. All promotions are subject to qualification and eligibility requirements. Rewards issued as non-withdrawable free bets or site credit. Free bets expire in seven days from issuance. Excludes Michigan disassociated persons. Please gamble responsibly. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP. In Arizona, 1-800-522-4700, Colorado, D.C., Louisiana, Nevada, Wyoming, Virginia, 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help in Michigan, 1-800-GAMBLER in Indianapolis, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and West Virginia, or 1-800-BETS-OFF in Iowa. Call or text the Tennessee red line 800-889-9789 Tennessee or call 1-888-777-9696 in Missouri or 1-800-547-6133 for Washington. That's 1-800-547-6133. Sports betting is void in Georgia, Hawaii, Ohio, and Utah and other states were prohibited. Promotional offers not available in Nevada. Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's the Monday Morning Podcast for Monday, December 23rd, 2013. How the hell are you? It's the holiday season. Doobie dooby doo. It's goodily boppy ba da ba doo boop. Ah, go fuck yourself at the mall. Um, two days before Christmas. Have you finished your shopping yet? You know what? I haven't. I've been traveling so much. Um, I actually drove to a mall. The other day, but do 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 do, and I looked inside. Wah 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 wah. I literally pulled up to this fucking thing, and there was so many. I can't even say cunts. Just so many fucking people who were in the same situation I am that they just had to go out and go buy shit. That they they actually had people directing traffic. You know, like there was some sort of flood. They had those same sort of jackets on, like I can see you from Mars, kind of official. Please don't run me over. I know where the supplies are, jackets, to direct people in to the fucking baby gap. And I was trying to make the light and I couldn't make, if I, you know, if I went to go make the light, then I would have blocked the road because I wasn't getting in. So I just had to wait. And I was sitting there, it was the first car. And I just looked at the guys in the coat. I looked at people not moving in line. And... I just said, I'm not fucking going in there. And I drove away. And I felt good. I felt good like the way when you used to, you know, when you'd you'd skip school. You'd be on the way to school. You didn't want to go. 
I don't want to fucking do that. I fucking hate this. I hate it. I don't want to do it. All right? I don't need to be taught beyond sixth grade. All right? And I knew it when I was a kid. I knew it. Right around sixth, seventh grade, I'm like, yeah, I got it. I got it. This is, this is, this is all I'm going to need in life. I'm not going to design a bridge. I'm not going to make a rocket ship. You know? I'm not going to manage finance. I'm not going to use my brain. I'm just going to be walking around, reading signs, and figuring out, you know, how much a pack of gum and a fucking donut costs, all right? I don't need Algebra 2 and trigonometry. I don't need that shit. So then you just go, fuck this, I'm not going to school, and you leave. And it's fucking great. It's great initially. And then there's that coming dread of like, you know, well, now I'm going to go back tomorrow. I'm going to have twice as much fucking work than I did today. Why did I just do that? And that's what I felt like when I, when I drove away from the mall. You know? I felt just like when I used to drive and when I was driving to school, my piece of shit car, and I would look at my high school, and I would be fighting my fucking hand, my whole arm, as it was trying to turn into the school. I would literally... I guess I would be fighting it to not just hold it straight and keep going. That's exactly how I felt at that mall. And I drove away. I drove away from that son of a bitch. All right? And here I am Monday, two days before Christmas. And what have I learned? If you don't fucking go into that fucking goddamn cesspool, you're not going to have any gifts. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, Bill, why don't you show up online? Why don't you show up online? Because I can't see it. I can't touch it. It's just a fucking picture. I'm not doing that. And how much shit on here is, uh, is bullshit on the internet? My podcast is bullshit. All right? Does that even make sense? I don't know what it means. I'm not fucking going on virtual shopping. Ah, like your goddamn kids! <laughs> Sound like a fucking old man. So now... Like the fucking asshole I am. I have to go to the mall today. December 23rd. When I should be sitting around with a nice sweater on, drinking some spiked eggnog. You know, leaning up against the counter. <clears throat> I'm not getting choked up. I just smoked a cigar yesterday. Leaning up against the counter. All right? Yeah, I don't know. Just fucking just leaning there. You know, people coming over talking to me. Loud music in the background with the fire on. They're talking to me and I'm not listening, but I'm smiling and I'm nodding. You know, one of those smiles where you don't show your teeth, you know? You have the same smile as when a kid draws a smiley face on a stick figure. You just have that smile on your face and you just nod in your head. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're talking and I'm listening and I'm agreeing. I'm agreeing. I don't give a shit what you're saying because I'm not fucking listening. Because I'm happy right now because I'm drinking eggnog. I'm getting a little glow going. Little fucking glow going. I don't have to go to the mall. Everything's wrapped. It's under the tree. Go fuck yourself. I don't have any stand up gigs. I ain't got shit to do until New Year's. You keep talking, and I'm going to keep sitting here with my little pinky stuck out as I drink out of these fancy little fucking teacups that has my spiked eggnog in it. That, my friends, is what I should be doing. But no. Not old Freckleface. Freckleface has to go back down to the fucking mall. Today, hoping that there's enough poor sons of bitches out there with such evil cunt bosses that they actually have to go to work on December 23rd. They got to show up at their cubicles and maybe with a little bit of luck, I can go down there between their half a fucking day, run in there and buy some shit that I then have to take home and wrap. Um, you know, and if you're a political prisoner right now and you're listening to this. You know, as you scratch another day on the wall, trying to not lose your mind. I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, you know, well, I would love to have some problems like that. You know? And you know what I say to you? I say to you, uh, you know, walk a day in my fucking shoes. All right there? Stuck in a prison cell, haven't seen loved ones in 12 years. Okay? You know, if your prison cell's so bad, how the fuck did you get a fucking device to download this podcast so you had to listen to it why don't you explain that one political prisoner do they give you a keyboard to write in some questions here to make me feel fucking bad um 
I just did that before somebody went, first world problems. You know what I hate more than anything? I hate fucking expressions. Not expressions like a stitch in time saves nine, which actually makes sense, which I can kind of equate to, you know, buy the present today so you don't have to fucking uh, wait nine hours in line on Monday. I just hate when, uh, I don't know, like a boss shaking my head. I just fuck, I don't mind them. I just, I, I hate how they're just continually used to the point I don't, that, that people are still expecting a laugh. It's like, how many fucking times have you heard that? How many times have you heard that come out of your own fucking mouth? Right? Oh, my God. I am in a fucking mood today. And you know why it is? It's because I have to go Christmas shopping. Um, and also because I bought a new mixer and I bought a more compact one that would be better for travel. And the guy goes, do you have all the wires that you need? I'm like, yeah, I got all that shit. I'm good. Thank you very much. And I come here, and there's just a little bit of a different setup. And I pressed every button. I plugged the wire in every place I could fucking plug it in, and I can't figure it out. All right? For you tech people out there, I have the Mackie 402 V as in Victor, L as in Lucy, Z as in Zebra 4. And I can't figure out how to fucking use it. So whatever. I'm, I'm holding this up like a microphone. I'm starting to like this, to be honest with you. Um, anyways, for those of you who, uh, you know, were out there shopping, doing what you should be doing, building snow forts and whatnot, um, I did a very special podcast this week with one of my, uh, favorite people, not only in this business, but also in the world, uh, Dave Keckner, David Keckner from the hilarious new, saw it last night, uh, Anchorman 2, the legend of Ron Burgundy continues, um, I interviewed him this past, uh, what was it, Friday, I think? Uh, yeah, Friday. Uploaded it, just in case you uh, didn't check to see. Check your Twitter account or whatever the fuck you find out that there's a new podcast. So I interviewed him. We talked about Anchorman and all this other stuff. Hanging out, getting drunk together and singing holiday songs and all that. We just had a great time. And uh, it was recorded. It was recorded live at the new All Things Comedy uh podcast studios so with that eventually hopefully i'm going to occasionally have a guest and they'll just be bonus podcasts all right i'm not going to be reading any fucking advertisements and all that shit it's just going to be hope well i say that now who knows what if i throw out my funny bone and i'm not, i can't do my stand-up anymore then maybe i'll have to do it well as of right now i plan to do it in a pure fashion i'm not reading any shit about chocolate covered fruit i'm not reading any shit about fucking how to how to have your own goddamn lemonade stand in your bedroom. I'm not doing that. I'm just going to inter uh, interview some people. Um, so David Keckner is the first one. And uh, Jay Moore is going to be my 72nd guest. Now, in between him, Keckner, and Jay Moore, I don't know what I'm going to have. But that's all. that. That's I'm just giving you guys the heads up. Okay? There we go. Um so anyways, I don't have a lot to talk about this week for the simple fact that I'm off the fucking road. And other than the fact that I have to do my Christmas shopping, I am excited that the, uh, the year's over. But I also have to keep, I uh, got to keep the act tight. Got to go to the local clubs. Got to do my little song and dance. Because I have a big New Year's gig. New Year's gig. New Year's gig, 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 gig. Yeah, 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 yeah. New Year's Eve, everybody. If your fucking Botoxed ass is in the Los Angeles area, I am playing at the mighty Wiltern Theater. A theater that I drove by for years. And I told my lovely wife, Nee, I said, someday I'm going to play that fucking place. I'm going to sell it out. And afterwards, we're going to get drunk. And I'm going to kiss you on the forehead. Now, God damn it. I have booked a gig there, but there's a few tickets left to make the dream come true. And you're like, well, Bill, wait a minute. Why do I just want to go and see you? Can you sweeten the pot a little bit? Is there anything else that you can add? It is a New Year's show. Is there something else that you can add to the pot to make me say, no, I'm not going to stay home and jerk off the Internet porn with the silly hat on blowing that fucking trumpet? Okay. I'm going to come down to the Wiltern Theater. What else do you have for me? 
It's a buyer's market. Everybody's trying to get me out to go fucking twinkle toes around their goddamn fucking tiles. All right? Well, I'm going to be down there with the entire crew of knuckleheads that I go to the Rose Bowl with um, every year. They're all doing about 10 minutes in front of me. Um, <clears throat> we have Rose Bowl, Rose Bowl tailgate legend, the mean Joe Green, the Jack Lambert, the Mike Wagner. Of the fucking uh, tailgate, Mr. Joe Bartnick. All right? With his new comedy CD, Salute. That we hyped right here on the podcast. He's going to be there. Joe, a.k.a. Joe, a.k.a. You need, 50, you need to lose 50 pounds before you talk to me, bitch. Bartnick will be there. We have Master Chef. And, uh, and uh, Heater Extraordinaire. Jason Lawhead is going to be there. Jay Lawhead, fan of all Cleveland sports. You cannot talk to Jason Lawhead about sports. Anytime you complain about your team, he immediately just says, I have no sympathy for you. You won a championship in 1972. Because he's never seen, he's never seen any of his professional teams win a championship. Therefore, therefore, he doesn't want to hear it from you. And last but not least... We got Andrew Themelis down there. Andrew Themelis, who brings other spirits that will not be mentioned to the tailgate. <laughs> He's also the one that has to sift through all your fucking emails every week to this podcast. And he has mentioned to me uh, he wants to do it a little more efficiently. All right, so here's how we can do it. Um, if you want to send in an email to this, uh, this podcast, the Low Technology Monday Morning Podcast, this is where you send your emails to. All right, you send it to Bill. That's Bravo Illness Lupus Lupus. Uh, Bill, <laughs> Bill at the mmpodcast dot com. All right, and the mmp and mm podcast are all capitalized. Bill at the mmpodcast dot com. All right, and he would please. He's asking you nicely to just say, please make the subject be rel relevant to your email. All right, just don't write like, uh, hey, cunt face or whatever. I mean, you can do that, but unless you're, if, if you're not writing about cunt faces, then, you know, if you want your shit read, help us out here. Please make the subject be relevant to the email. Um, he says, I read emails that are great, but they have shitty subjects and vice versa. Oh, so in other words, don't give a great subject to a shitty email. Email. Uh, number two, please keep them less than 10,000 words. Some people write great stories, but they are too long for the podcast. In other words, I suck at reading out loud. And uh, last but not least, I know a lot of people ordered some T-shirts and DVDs. Uh, we're doing a bang-up job. Andrew is getting everything out there. Um, unfortunately, this is a crazy time of year. Occasionally, merchandise has gotten lost. 99% of it has not gets lost or stolen in the mail. Who knows what the fuck they're doing out there. Um, out of the 2,000 plus orders that we've had, we've had like, what are we up to? I don't know how many. I think we've had maybe like 10 or 11 that had a problem out of 2,000. So, and know this, okay? If for some reason, whatever you order doesn't get there in time for Christmas and anything, just let us know in a nice, gentlemanly, ladylike way. And I swear to God, I'll send you some extra shit. I'll autograph it or whatever, okay? There you go. Anyways, so on, back to the podcast here. Um, speaking of reading out loud, I only have, uh, we only have two reads this week, so you guys don't have to worry about me annoying the shit out of you with my, my reading out loud, my lack, my lack thereof of reading out loud skills. Um, so I'm doing New Year's Eve, and uh, I was actually thinking the other day, I had a buddy of mine um, who was going out to go do a New Year's give, gig, or he's coming up there, and we were talking about how funny it is when they give out the noisemakers before the show starts, and just who is the fucking asshole who came up with those fucking trumpets, those things that just hit that note, just, hey, hey, that fucking thing. <laughs> I think it was somebody who just hated New Year's. Or never got invited to a party. And he's like, all right, you're going to go out to a party? I'm just going to make this fucking horn that's going to annoy the shit out of everybody. Um, which reminds me to tell every comedian out there, whatever gig you do, make sure they don't hand out the fucking noisemakers before you go on stage. Because there is no comeback to, hey, 
Um, all right, here we go. The advertising for this week. Man, great, everybody. This is the holiday season. Dooby dooby do. Think the fucking man great. What is the man great, you ask? They are 100% made in America. Cast iron grilling grates that are revolutionizing the way people grill. Named one of 2012's best grilling accessories by Men's Health Magazine. Man grates, man grates are the perfect gift this holiday season. Click on the man great banner at billbird.com for their 1999 holiday special. Remember? Each Monday morning podcast order comes with a heavy-duty grilling brush. Again, that's the Man Great Grill Enhancement System. Order today at BillBird.com. And lastly, but not leafly, Hulu Plus, everybody. You've probably tried Hulu.com. Now with Hulu Plus, you can watch your favorite shows anytime, anywhere. Hulu Plus lets you watch thousands of of hit TV shows and a selection of acclaimed movies on your television or on the go with your smartphone or tablet. And it all streams in HD for the best viewing experience. With Hulu Plus, you can watch your favorite current TV shows like Saturday Night Live, Community, and Family Guy. You can also check out exclusive content, including Hulu originals like The Awesomes, starring SNL's Seth Meyers, who's got his own talk show coming out soon, uh, and Moon Boy, starring Chris O'Dowd from Bridesmaids. Hulu Plus also offers a great selection of acclaimed films. For only $7.99 a month, you can stream as many TV shows and movies as you want, wherever you want. Right now, you can try Hulu Plus for free for two weeks when you go to HuluPlus.com slash Bill. That's a special offer for my listeners. Make sure you use HuluPlus.com slash Bill so you get the extended free trial and that they know that we sent you. Go to HuluPlus.com slash Bill. Go to it right now or click on the Hulu Plus banner on the podcast page at BillBird.com. Wow, those were, those were two very nice reads, if I do say so myself. Um, all right, what are we going to talk about this week? You know, I, I, like I said, I don't have a lot to talk about. And um, I did watch uh, some American football for the first time since, uh, I guess, the last three weeks. I actually sat down and watched some. I had had no idea that the Colts were in it. I thought the Colts were like beating every good team in the league and then shit in the bed against bad ones, and they were going to be about 8-8. Eight and eight. Evidently, they're going to make the playoffs. Playoffs? Um, I still like the Seattle Seahawks, despite the fact that they lost to the Arizona Cardinals. Um, I still think it is theirs to lose. Um, anyways, I watched the Patriots-Ravens game yesterday, and I was embarrassed by that officiating. Jesus Christ, what the fuck did the Ravens do? That was like watching an NBA game. Um, and sad to say, a lot of the calls, it's not even the ref's fault. Those are like the new rules. I think for our first touchdown, what happened was one of the Ravens' cornerbacks um, had the nerve to look our receiver in the eye as he escorted him down the field. And uh, thanks to Jim Irsay, that is, that is illegal now. Okay? After five yards, you cannot put your hands on the receiver, and in no way, shape, or form, after seven yards, are you allowed to look at the receiver. You can't look him in the eye. You can't look him in, in his general vicinity. You're supposed to keep him in your peripheral vision without touching him. Okay? And if you sense that he is looking back at the ball, you then also have to look back at the ball, but not in the direction of the receiver's head. You have to turn your head the same way the receiver turned his head, you know what they should do at this point? They should just put, give like penalty flags to the wide receiver and just have, like, anytime the receiver gets touched, he can just reach in and fucking throw the flag because that's what every fucking receiver does now when the ball sails over his head as they're falling to the ground. Have you noticed the receivers are, are miming throwing a flag? They throw their fucking hand up. I don't know. It's annoying as hell. So, um,. I, I, I was actually surprised. I thought we were going to lose to the Ravens. I, um, you know, but it's just, I don't like winning like that. We're like 20 calls all go in your favor. I mean, I actually saw, what's his face? Harbaugh at one point, he was just like, what? And I agreed with him. I laughed. I felt bad for the guy. And I'm rooting against his fucking team. Um, I don't know. This is just, I th it's all this fallout of, I think, the concussions, and I also think it's the fallout 
of when uh, Peyton Manning and Jim Irsay had their fucking crybaby fest when they lost to the Patriots yet again and they made the tape and they went to the NFL and the NFL was going, that's legal, that's legal. And then they bitched again, they bitched during the, the fucking Pro Bowl, they bitched at the Pro Bowl, they bitched during the week of the Super Bowl, they bitched right up to the fucking draft. And then Jim Irsay, who sits on the rules committee, spearheaded all these new uh, fucking rules of coverage and... I don't know. It's not the game that I grew up with. I still love watching it. Um, ah, it was fucking great yesterday. I had a couple buddies over. Got the fire going. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get to watch the Packers Steelers with the snow on the ground. I was watching. Uh, what did I watch yesterday? I watched Patriots Ravens, and then I watched some of the Eagles late night game. Um, and I guess they're playing real well. I don't know a lot of shit that's going on. I'm getting caught up in hockey. I watched a couple Bruins Sabers games. You know. 1-1, one, one, we lost one, and uh, I don't know. I, it's funny, a lot, a lot of, I, I saw what Sean Thornton did, you know, against the Penguins. Penguins fans are fucking hilarious. I think they actually have a lot of guilt with some of the absolute animals that they've had on their team because they're really trying to compare, go and like, act like Sean, what Sean Thornton did and everything that Matt Cook did, like that's a wash like penalties offset, like one disgusting, horrible piece of shit move by Thornton washes out Cook's entire three-year terror run before he turned his game around, which I do give him credit for. Now he plays the game a lot you know, cleaner or whatever. Um, I can really listen to it from any other, anybody else other than Penguins fans. I mean, you guys have Ulf Samuelson in your ring of honor. I really think you're making a statement. When you do something like that, when you put a guy like that up there next to fucking Mario Lemieux, I mean, it's just, it's unbelievable. Uh, and I was actually talking to somebody about some of the d most dirtiest players I've ever seen since I'd watched the game, all the way back to the Claude, Claude Lemieux, the Dale Hunters, and all those. Uh, you know, in my top ten list, like two of them are, are Pittsburgh Penguins. Um and I think to make that list, you have to have that reptilian sort of brain where you can end a guy's career and, like, in between periods, just sit there eating a sandwich and you're not nauseous at all. <laughs> you just don't give a fuck. That scary, that scary fucking thing where people on the ice have their head on a swivel, like, where is he? Where is he? Um, and there's a very special few. That have that have uh, that have done that have just brought that vibe to it. But anyways, I'm psyched to get back into watching hockey and that type of stuff. And uh, there has to be a happy median medium with this fuck. Yet another record. Uh, Peyton Manning, congratulations! He just threw for 51 fucking touchdowns. But does it even? I mean, and it's he's phenomenal. But with you can't cover receivers anymore. So I think that they have to have. They should just since these new rules. Almost like the steroid era. Like you have to have a new wing as far as uh, records go because if you essentially couldn't cover a fucking receiver past five yards, all right, Dan Marino, all day long, I didn't even want to fucking hear it. That guy would have, he'd have 60 touchdowns, 70 touchdowns. He'd throw for 6,000 fucking yards. He played when you could still mug a receiver and he still, all these records, are, I don't know. These are all Dan Marino's records. It's bugging me that they made the game easier. Maybe it's harder in other layer. I don't know. I'm just a grumpy old fucking man. So anyways, I don't have shit to talk about this week. And somehow I've managed to still talk for 25 minutes because I'm a goddamn windbag. And um, so I, I was doing my usual shit. I was going on the internet when I don't have shit to talk about. And uh, I was trying to find, uh, get caught up on some stories. I guess everybody from the uh, Greenpeace 30 have been let go. And uh, two of the pussy riot members go free in Russia. Russia, you know, I swear to God, if you're hippies or you're singing in a band, they stick you in prison. Really old school. New prison amnesty seemed by critics as an attempt to ward off criticism of human rights record ahead of the Winter Olympics. Oh, yeah. I guess they spent a ton of money on the Winter Olympics. Like they bought a bunch of fake snow. Vladimir Putin or whatever the fuck his name is. He bought a bunch of fake snow just in case there isn't snow in the posh area that they want to have the Olympics. So, um, you know what it is. 
you can put anonymous people in prison and uh, nobody really pays attention. But uh, if they're a bunch of hippies attached to Greenpeace, everybody pays attention. And if they're in a band called Pussy Riot, people give a fuck. So uh, one of the pussy, two of the Pussy Riders, that's the name of the band, just got out of jail. Uh, the third member of the Russian punk band Pussy Riot, what did she do, two and a half years? Uh, released from custody following an amnesty law passed by Parliament. Uh, um, let me at least try to do her last name. Tola Konakova. Tola Konakova. Tola Konakova. Nazdish, Naz, Nazda. No. Nadizhda. Tola Konakova. Left prison. Left a prison colony in eastern Siberia. They put somebody in a fucking band, in a punk band in Siberia. On Monday, hours after another band member, Maria, normal name, Alakina, I don't know how to say it, was released in another region. The amnesty that enabled their release is seen as the Kremlin's attempt to soothe criticism of Russia's human rights record ahead of the Winter Olympics in so Sochi in February. I don't know if I'm saying any of this right. Uh, one, okay, the, one of them was 25, the other was 24, were convicted of hooliganism for performing a crude punk prayer in a cathedral against Putin's ties to the Russian Orthodox Church. The two women have been due for, have been due for at least in March. How much time did they do? I don't fucking know. Was that even remotely exciting? Well, if you thought that was boring, here's another one. Here's another Russian guy. Kalish, Kalish, Nikov, Kalishkinov, Kalishnikov. What the fuck is with the 12 consonants in a row? K-A-L-A-S-H-N-I-K-O-V. I'm good with the Kalash. Oh, there it is. Kalishnikov. Assault rifle. Designer dead at 94. And you're probably like, Bill, why do I give a fuck about this guy? Who is this guy? All the rednecks know him. This guy was the inventor of the AK-47. Um, the assault rifle. Designer of the AK-47 assault rifle that killed more people than any other firearm has died. Um, the designer of the assault rifle that killed more people than any other, he died at 94. Um, he was in his 20s when he created the AK-47. Well, there's a go-getter. Just after World War II. He died in his home city of, uh, well, you know something that I don't feel bad for him. After what the fucking Germans did coming into their goddamn country. He's a, he's a real patriotic guy. He said, well, we got to be able to mow down these crouch next time they come over the border. And he made the AK-47. So my hat's off to him. Um, and last but not least, this is what's going on in the world, according to my fucking skimming. Thousands rally against racism in Sweden. I was just there. I didn't realize that they had uh, neo-Nazis in Sweden. Oh, that's disgusting. Thousands of Swedes demonstrating against racism and Nazism have gathered in, Stockho in a Stockholm suburb a week after a smaller rally in the same district was attacked by neo-Nazis. What kind of a jerk-off joins a fucking neo-Nazi group? What is it about Hitler that you're looking at going, oh, yeah, there's the guy that makes sense? I don't know. What is it? Is they have nothing else going on in their life other than the fact that they're white. Um, you're white. You're a white male heterosexual. How much further down the track do you need to start the race and you still lose? So then you got to blame somebody else who starts nine miles in the other fucking direction and they catch up with you. Oh, you whiny cunts. Okay, so crowds marched on. Evidently, they had an anti-racism march and these neo-Nazis attacked it. You know, is, is there ever an uglier look on somebody's face when they're pro-racism, when they're attacking somebody? It's the fucking most hateful look. Look at that son of a bitch. Uh, so crowds marched on Sunday towards a spot in Kartarp. It's the south of the capital where music performances and speeches were held. Organizers of the event said 16,000 people attended the rally. Well, thank God for those 16,000. About 100 uniformed police were deployed at the event. Uh, police spokesman said, oh, that's good. One person for every six, 1,600 people. What could go wrong? Um, I don't know. Is that right? Or 160? Oh, Jesus, Bill. Don't be doing math in your head. I've been to many demonstrations in my life, and this is one of the biggest. That's great. That's great, said some fucking person that I can't uh, pronounce their name. It shows how we many 
uh, how many we are fighting for the equal value of all human rights and that we are many in comparison to the extremists. I think many people are worried about the rise of the far right in Europe and want to show that in Sweden we are taking another route. How about you're taking a new route? Didn't you let the Nazis use your train systems to go into fucking Norway? Ah, Jesus. I actually, it's just always going to be around. It's just always going to be around, and I guess, how do, you, how do you think you combat that shit? Do you have to fight it with violence? How else do you do it? I, these guys, I don't understand them. Are you not eating every day? Do you not have a roof over your head? What is the fucking problem? That's depressing. All right, why did I read that? That just put me in a bad fucking mood. Is anything worse than fucking neo-Nazis? The sons of neo-Nazis. Um, anyways, let's, 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 let's read some shit here. Christmas shopping. I talked about my new mixer. I talked about Penguins fans. I talked about uh, NFL football. I, I don't know what else to tell you. You know what it is this week, people? I just have unbelievable anxiety. They have to go out and shop. And you know what's funny? When I actually went out browsing the other day, I actually saw a bunch of shit from me. And if that isn't the ultimate sign of what a selfish cunt you are, um, <laughs> I can't find anything for anybody. Oh, I would like that. I would enjoy that. Um, all right. Anchorman 2. Bill Broadcaster saw Anchorman 2. It was brilliant. The whole cast is great. Yeah, I just saw it. I fucking loved it. Um, I went with uh, I went with Lawhead and Nia last night. We all had a great time. Uh, they said the whole cast is great, but there is a level of trust when it comes to Will Farrell. He always makes the right decisions. Love listening to you talk to David Keckner. You definitely have to have Jay Moore on so at some time. Uh, the running joke with Jay Moore is he gave me shit for not. He, I was on his podcast, and I haven't had him back on my podcast. All right, and there is a method to my madness. I don't think you should go on somebody's podcast and then fucking two weeks later. You have to, you just talk to him for a goddamn hour about comedy and every other thing under the sun. You got to let some time go by. You know, you got to let it marinate. You got to let it heat up. You got to let some shit, some water go under the bridge before you have him back. Plus, I never have guests on this podcast. I just don't. But now we have a studio, so I will do it. So David Keckner was first. Jay Moore, 72nd. So I got to have another fucking, what is that, 70 guests? Um, anyways, he said, you definitely have to have Jay Moore on sometime, but don't let the whole guest thing get out of control. You're the master of the monologue. Go fuck yourself. Uh, in other words, keep doing what you're doing. All right. Need an NFL team. Hey, William, I've really gotten into the NFL this season, but still don't have a team I really follow. Being Irish with no allegiance to any state, I have the choice of any team in the league. So it can either be a glory hunting fuck and go with the Seahawks. See, even this guy in Ireland knows that the Seahawks are the favor or the Broncos or being long suffering cunt to go with the Raiders or the Jets. Any thoughts yourself? Um, I would definitely not be a Jets fan because there is there's a one sip of glory in their, in their entire victory chest there. Uh, but the Raiders, they've won three Super Bowls. They do have a great logo, although their fan base has kind of made a left turn with the dressing up and all that type of shit, the same way we kind of have the Sweet Caroline stuff. Um, I try and block that out. I like the Raiders. The Raiders also, if you're going to listen to them on the radio, I think have one of the best announcers in all the sports. Um... I don't know. Just pick a team and have a good fucking time. I don't give a shit who you pile on with. I mean, I wouldn't pick a team that sucks if I was trying to get into the sport. You know what I would do? I would pick a team that's just underneath the favorites. Um, like, I don't know. I'm trying to think of the Premier League, who the fuck I would pick. I don't know who I would pick. But I definitely wouldn't pick like a Man United. Um, I would more go Man City, I guess. I don't fucking know. I'm in over my goddamn head. Uh, but I would definitely say do not pick the Jets, okay? You don't want to pick the Jets, all right? The Jet. I am a 45-year-old man. The Jets have not won a Super Bowl since I was one years old. I'm walking around with my big, pasty, hairless head, pissing and shitting myself, okay? So that's that's that option. 
The Raiders have not won a title since uh, my voice just started cracking as I was hitting puberty. I'm like, do you think they're going to beat the Redskins? That's the last time that they won. <laughs> Ronald Reagan was in his first term as president. All right? I'm just letting you know what you're signing up for. Let's go around the league a little bit. The Miami Dolphins. The Miami Dolphins have not won a Super Bowl since uh, I got a cowboy outfit. I got a hat and I got some guns, some cap guns for my birthday. And then the big kids, as I was standing there, came walking by, took both guns out of my holster and just smashed them on the fucking driveway and continued walking away, walking up the street. They just came walking up the street. They saw me standing there dressed like Billy the Kid. And they're like, that's not Billy the Kid. That's not even Billy the Teen. That is Billy the Toddler. And they walked up to me. They took my guns out of my holster. And they smashed them on the ground, laughed, and continued walking. I picked them up. I walked into the house. And I handed them to my mother. And she said, who did this? And I said, I said, big kids. And then she made me a sandwich. All right. <laughs> Peanut butter and jelly, and she left the crusts on because she didn't raise any fucking finicky pussies when it came to food. All right? I made you the sandwich, so I don't eat it. Um, you, you, you remember that when you were a kid? You were going to sit there until you finished that. Was that a dying thing? Is that considered abuse now? And you just sit there, your fucking legs falling asleep, and it was her way to just keep you stationary where she went around and cleaned the fucking house? So then what did you end up doing? You ended up taking most of the food and you fucking threw it behind the stereo. That was that giant wooden thing that they had it on. You just threw it back there. <laughs> did you finish it? Yes, I did. I ate it all. And then that was it. But you were too stupid to wait till she walked away or went to the store and just grabbed the sandwich and throw it away. You just left it there till all the ants came and then she figured it out. And then you got sent to bed anyways. Possibly beaten with the fraternity panel that your dad kept. All right. I'm going to have to go. To, you know what? I'm going to NFL.com. I'm going to go buy all the fucking teams right now. I'll give you a little. This for the holidays. I'll give you a little childhood story. During the holiday season, Scooby Dooby Doo and Silvery Bells get on the fucking sleigh and we'll go to Grandma's senile house. Um, I went to the NHL.com. Sorry, force of habit. NFL.com. Here we go. Loading, loading, loading. Get those teams a go in. All right. The Buffalo Bills have never won a championship. So there's no story for you. That's one team. All right. The Baltimore Ravens have not won a Super Bowl since January. I don't have any childhood stories because I was an adult. So that's a man's team right there. The Cincinnati Bengals have never won a Super Bowl. No story for you. So far, the Buffalo Bills and the fucking Cincinnati Bengals, zero titles. And you want to add to that? No fucking childhood story? The Cleveland Browns. You take all three of them, you stick them in a burlap sack like a bunch of kittens you can't raise, you throw them over the bridge in the fucking river. The Pittsburgh Steelers have not won a fucking title since, uh, what, 2009? That's a good team to jump on. They get a head coach and they fucking stick with them. The Houston Texans, expansion franchise. Wait a minute before you throw those kittens over the bridge. We got another one to stick in the burlap sack. The Indianapolis Colts. Used to be the Baltimore Colts. They have not won a Super Bowl since I had just stopped pissing myself. I had just learned how to sit on that little plastic toilet. You know? Urinate or defecate. Stand up excitedly, scream at my mother and point at it. I got I, 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 I fucking shit! Right? The Jaguars never won one. The Titans... A.K.A. the Houston Oilers never won one. Jesus, there's a lot of teams that haven't won a Super Bowl. The Denver Broncos have not won a Super Bowl 
since I didn't realize I was going to go bald and the <laughs> or start balding. <clears throat> I still have some left um, in the late 90s. They have not won a Super Bowl till somebody said for the first time, hey, have you heard of this guy, Eminem? Uh, by the way, have you guys heard his new album yet? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. How fucking inspiring is that if you're in any sort of entertainment? The Kansas City Chiefs have not won a Super Bowl since 1970. 1970, since Nixon was not exposed as a fucking liar. The Raiders already did. The Chargers have never won one. They won a fucking AFL title. The Dallas Cowboys have not won one since people were winning Z Cavaricci fucking pants. Oh, no, they won one in like 95. Right as grunge was dying, and for some reason people thought that that those guys who sang, sang Glycerine was a good band. The Giants have not won one since they broke my fucking heart for the second time. Am I really going to go through the whole league? I think I am. The Philadelphia Eagles have never won a Super Bowl. Throw them in that burlap fucking sack with the kittens. The Redskins have not won a Super Bowl since uh, since Zeke Cavaricci pants. The Chicago Bears have not won a Super Bowl since 1985. What was going on then? Since Cindy Lauper was actually relevant. The Detroit Lions have not even won a fucking championship. I think black people weren't even allowed to play in the NFL. Maybe they were. Since 1955 with Bobby Lane. Green Bay Packers is a good team to jump onto. The uh, Minnesota Vikings is an adult cat that acts like a kitten. Loser of four Super Bowls. Stick them in that burlap sack. The fucking Atlanta Falcons. Why do you have a team? I don't give a fuck that you change your uniforms to black. Nobody gives a shit. You get in the burlap sack. The Panthers, you're an expansion franchise. You get in, but you're on the top of the sack. We'll give you a chance to crawl out. The Saints won one in 2010, I think. The Buccaneers... Won one in like 2002. The Cardinals have never won one. Get in that burlap sack. Shut your face. Get in the sack. The Rams haven't won one since 99. The San Francisco 49ers, great franchise. That's a great team to follow, the 49ers. The Seattle Seahawks, despite how loud they scream on purpose, have never won a fucking Super Bowl. They can also get into the fucking burlap sack, but they're also at the top of it because I think that they might fly out and win one this year. So there's your league. Those are your teams. I hope it made sense. All right, back to the fucking questions here. Um, <clears throat> new Christmas tradition. Dear Billy Stovetop Pipe, uh, how about instead of mistletoe, which encourage you to, which encourages, look at this kind of guy, this guy writes this. How about instead of mistletoe, which encourage you to another person while standing under under it, which encourage you to kiss another person while standing under it. There is a new berry and a shrub combination that suggests you go fuck yourself. What berry shrub combo would you suggest is appropriate? Thanks and have a jolly, holly jolly go fuck yourself. Jesus Christ, dude. I actually like Christmas. I thought you would say have a fucking combination like berry and shrub. That means that someone, uh, you know, some female has to drop and blow you. Or a fella, if you're into that. You know? Or if you're a lesbian, maybe you just put the shrub up there. You just have a bush hanging from the ceiling. Equal opportunity, however you want to do it. But I figure if you got the berries on the side, the shrub, well, you just sort of cut it in like a dick sort of uh, shape. And then there's your unit. I don't know what to do with that. Yeah, lesbian, you just have, like, a shrub. <laughs> Why don't you like the mistletoe, sir? It is kind of fucking perverted, right? Some creepy guy hanging out around it. Nia keeps telling me to hang up the mistletoe. It's like, why don't you just come over and give me a kiss? I mean, I'm, I'm glad to do it. No, it's a tradition. Ah, fuck, I got to go out to the mall. Let's see what I'm doing. Just go out to the mall. I'm just going to buy shit. I'm just going to see shit. I'm going to grab it. I'm going to buy it. And then I'm just going to have like, do you, do you like it? That's just what I'm going to do. All right, then I'm going to get some fucking eggnog. And I can only drink one glass of it, but they don't sell just a glass. You got to buy the whole quart of it. And I'm going to get some bourbon. I'm going to stick it in there. And I'm going to get fucking drunk. That's what I'm going to do. 
leaning against the mantle with the fire going. Um, oh, fuck. I got to wrap this podcast up because I have to go shopping. Shopping. Do you believe that? How do you guys do it? How do you do the internet thing? Where do you go for next year? Can you help out other older fellows like myself that don't understand the internet unless you're talking about porn or trying to find out who won the game? Can you do that for me? I, I did order a couple of things off the internet, but I don't fucking know. I'll go to Mitchell and Ness and buy myself a jersey like I'm some make-a-wish kid. But other than that, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. All right, here we go. Another creepy email. Yet another creepy email. Uh, interested in younger girl of legal age. Okay. Dear Billy Blue Balls. <laughs> in your last podcast and many others, you talked about what you think is an acceptable age gap between people in a relationship. Oh, by the way, that, you know, divide by two and add seven that that, that guy was taking credit for. I like to do this. You fucking hack. The French came up with that. Those stinky, smelly sons of bitches came up with that one. Um, actually, the younger French people don't smell. It's the older ones that have just not given in to, good Lord, those smelly menage trois. Um, is that you or me? I currently have a moral dilemma that relates to the topic in which, as a 20-year-old, I'm thinking about pursuing a relationship with a girl who's 16. Dude, when, what, where in the fucking world is she legal? She asked me out recently, and I'm toiling with the decision as to whether or not I should take her up on her offer. Uh, I'd like to know what your thoughts are about this. Before you jump to conclusion and start hating my guts, let me give you a little backstory. Where I live, the age of consent is 16. So this is 100% legal. You know what? I would do a search to try to figure out where that is because you conveniently didn't tell you. But if I did, I'd end up on some list because I would be searching where is 16 legal to fuck somebody. If you go with the French, divide your age in half. That's 10. You add 7, 17. You're coming in under the fucking wire. Uh, I'm a very young looking 20 year old. So what, Ralph Macchio ought to be able to fuck a 16-year-old? What the fuck kind of... Oh, my... What, what, when did this become to, the, the, uh, to Catch a Predator podcast? I'm a very young-looking 20-year-old and can easily pass off as a high school student, you fucking creep. If you didn't look at my ID, you'd think me and this girl are the same age. She's highly intelligent and very mature. What is mature in your world? There aren't just pictures in her book. I know pedophiles like to use this phrase a lot to justify their actions, but I can have better conversations with this girl than most girls my age and older. I, wait a minute. This is a lady. I just turned 20, and for much of the time, we are only three years apart. Okay. Wait a minute. Now, you're going to expose me for being a sexist individual here. All right. So, you're both women. I, I need, I need, ah, oh shit, Nia's still sleeping. I need a fucking female's advice here. You know? Because, uh, the way you're set up physically, this is how dumb I am. Okay? And don't judge me here. Help me. Because of the way you set up physically, for some reason it doesn't seem as bad. You know? That you can't, uh, you're not going to fuck them. You know? You're just going to kiss them and pet them and lap at them. <laughs> this is so fucking creepy. Um, oh, wait, there's more excuses here. I'm sorry. Um, I just turned 20, and for much of the time, we we're only three years apart. She's probably much more experienced sexually than me, as she had previously been in a serious relationship for quite some time. Jesus Christ, when did this girl start fucking? And I've never had a relationship that lasted more than a month or two. Never in my entire life, including grade school, have I ever had a relationship or gone on a date with someone younger than me. This is an entirely new territory, and I guess you can see why I'd be apprehensive. You keep painting yourself as the victim. I really like this girl, and she must like me, but 
I don't know what my next step should be. There's no one I can really talk to about this without them jumping to conclusions. So any advice you can give me would be help, helpful. Thanks, Bill, and go fuck yourself. P.S. Please come to Saskatchewan. Okay, there we go. Uh, sometime during your travels. you got fans up here, and we're aching for some high-quality stand-up. Um, all right. Well, what's weird about this email is where I live, 16 is not the age of consent. All right? So this is creeping me out. Um, now, let me make sure you are a female. I didn't read that wrong. She's highly intelligent. I know pedophiles are his face, but I can only have a better conversation. Where did I think that she was a woman? I'm a very young-looking 20-year-old and can easily pass off as a high school student. If you didn't look at my ID, you'd think me and this girl are the same age. Where did I think that this was a woman? Am I out of my fucking mind? Ah, Jesus Christ. Now I don't know. I don't know what the fuck to think. Look, if you're a guy and you're going to make this fucking move, I, it's just I, I don't I, I can't get out of the fact that it's fucking illegal in my world. And I use the French thing, cut in half plus seven. Whatever you are, man, woman, hermaphrodite, just be like, look, talk to me in eleven months. All right, when you turn seventeen. And I guess that's legal up uh, even more legal and I, I don't know. I don't fucking know. You know, Go make a snowman with them. Uh, her, I, I don't fucking, I don't. I don't want to read these anymore. All right? I don't want to be like giving people, exactly, you know, well, there's a uh, eight-year-old down the street, and I'm a young 14-year-old, and I was, you know, I don't like doing the stuff people my age do. I still like playing with matchbox cars. Fucking creepy. All right? Cut it out. Accidentally racist story. Accidentally racist, racist, racist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, hey, Bill, love the podcast and I enjoy your work. Well, thank you very much, person. I don't know if it's a man or a woman. All I know is that they're just going to be talking about being racist and not trying to have sex with somebody who's potentially or not underage. Um, the guy that wrote in last week about the accidental racist thing was probably full of shit. He said, I read that same subject and that exact same story on Reddit over four months ago. No way. If it is the exact same guy that started the Reddit thread, then cool. If not, then fuck him. Oh, anyways, have you ever dealt with someone stealing your material on stage? Thanks. Um, uh, yeah. Yes, I have. I've had, uh, have had that happen. Not that much. Maybe like a half dozen times. And I just walk up to the person. I just say, hey, that's my stuff. And I've seen you see me do it. And then they never make eye contact. Oh, you're going to make a big deal out of this? Yes. Yes, I am. And then they stop. Um, but I think people who aren't in this business, uh, they steal shit all the time. You know, if you look at like, uh, I don't know, regular people can be hacky just because there's no, they're, there's nobody's judging their work. So there's a freedom to what they do. Uh, but passing off, Louis C.K. did a great bit about that. Did anybody ever tell you a really funny story? And then like two weeks later, you're telling the story like it happened to you. And then you get halfway through the story and you realize that you're telling the story back to the guy who told it to you originally. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess people do shit like that. I, I, I don't fucking know. Wow, that's disappointing. That's like twice. That guy stole from the, you know, I got this little theory that I... Uh, I like to do. I remember one time I worked with a comedian, and he, and he said, you know, I, I, I have this saying that I like to say, and it's free your mind and your ass will follow. And it was like either a parliament or Funkadelic. George Clinton or something came up, and this guy actually was selling this on bumper stickers. I have a saying that, uh, you know, two in the hand is worth, you know, one in the hand is worth two in the bush. And I put it on this T-shirt, and I'd like to sell it. All right. Dear Mr. Cuntyface, dear McCuntface, sorry. The new secretary in my office is a black woman and baked cookies for the office. I sarcastically said, I hope you slaved over these all night. She stared at me and I saw pure evil in her eyes. 
The question now is, do I eat one or is it unspoken that they're now off limits for me? Um, I, I don't Well, Yeah, you made a joke and they, it wasn't funny. I sarcastically said, I hope you slaved over these all night. Oh, slaved over these all night. He has like three L's. Um, Jesus Christ, dude. Um, I, I, I think your question, you should buy a joke book is what you should do. Maybe watch some stand-up and learn how to deliver them. Um, the only way you, that would could ever be funny is if you knew that person really well and that was the relationship you guys had. Like you, you joked around about shit like that. But to say that in front of all the people at the office... Uh, I don't know what to tell you, but you're, but you're a selfish cunt and you don't give a shit. You don't give a fuck about people because all you care about now is, can I eat one of the cookies or can I not, you know, and you're probably going to be a terrible father and have awful unexamined children. That's what I get out of all of that. Um, yeah, you're one of those people that kind of likes hurting people. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm judging you in the paragraph, but like the person that I'm picturing, I don't fucking know. Um, anyways, number three. Hey, hey there, Billy Goat's Gruff. Oh, this is all the accidental racist shit here. Um, that wasn't accidentally racist. That was on purpose racist. Because um, I think if it was funny, it would have been funny. And I don't. you don't give a shit on any level that you might have hurt that person's feelings. All you want is to know is if you can have the cookies. Yeah, so you're a cunt. Um, that's, that's not, was nothing accidental about it. Um, number three, a hey, Billy Goat Gruff. My white friend used to go to Temple University in Philly years back. As you probably know, it's a highly populated black area. Now, how the fuck would I know that? Uh, I guess I, cause I've done shows in Philly. I don't know which areas or what. Anyways, he was at a house party with this chick and most likely a wee bit tipsy. They were heading out to leave when his gal realized she forgot her black handbag in the other room. Uh-oh. My friend told her to sit tight and he'll go get it. He stormed back into the room and yelled out, Hey, is there a black person here? Uh, the room fell silent as he found himself staring at an entire room filled with black people. When he realized what he said, he quickly snatched the purse sitting on the couch and held it up. And he said, no, no, a purse. It's a black purse. Yeah, I don't understand. What is, uh, how did he offend people? He said, everybody figured out what he meant and they all laughed. He slinked out and told all his white friends. Did you get it, Bill? Is there a black person here? Oh, what, like pussy? Person. Is there a black person here? Oh, person. Ah, is there a black person here? Ah, that's hilarious. <laughs> I didn't get it. Hugs and kisses. That's fucking hilarious. You know what I love is that you realized I'm too stupid that if I'm reading out loud, trying not to fuck that, I wouldn't be able to fucking... Uh... Now, you know what? That seems too fucking convenient. Is that an old fucking story? Did you steal that one too? Hey, is there a black person here? Ah, Jesus. Um... Jesus Christ, people. Do you not have enough funny stories in your life? You got to start making them up. Uh, number four, a group of people from work, including myself. This is all accidentally racist, racist. A uh, group of four people from work, including myself, were sitting at the front of the light rail. Parentheses, above ground version of a subway in North Carolina and drinking all day at a pub crawl. At a, pub crawl. a group of black people came up to sit behind us. And our drunk, ditzy, blonde co-worker says, Welcome to the front of the bus. <laughs> I gotta tell you something. That's actually fucking funny. I think that that's... I don't know. I think that that's funny. She didn't mean... Oh, she didn't mean it in a bad way. You guys were just partying and she just said, Welcome to the front of the bus. I gotta tell you, that is fucking hilarious. That's uh, that one is fucking hilarious. Oh my god! <laughs> All right, one of them was funny. I like it. There we go. And what do we got here? Oh, an hour and one. The podcast is fucking over. 
Um, we got the wrap up here. Now that the show is over, don't forget to sign up for your free trial of Hulu Plus. Once again, Hulu Plus lets you binge on thousands of hit shows anytime, anywhere on your TV, PC, smartphone, or tablet. Support the po- this podcast and get an extended free trial on Hulu Plus when you go to the podcast page at BillBird.com and click the Hulu Plus banner or go to, Bill- or go to HuluPlus.com slash Bill. That's Hulu co- Hulu doc- HuluPlus.com slash Bill. Sorry, I was looking at the clock to see if I had enough time to fuck- tell you this quick story. I have a pet peeve. As I was walking through the mall the other day, and uh, I was hating my life, um, this other mall that I ended up going to that was more like, uh, it wasn't a mall, it was like this strip of stores on a street, so you weren't stuck there. And there was this Christmas tree, and I have, I have a new pet. Oh, Cleo! You got fleas? Oh, baby, I like my dog. Oh, baby, I like my dog! What's up, buddy? Huh? What's up? I actually got this dog to like one of my friends. I got a new thing that I do. I just take her for a walk with all my friends, with one of my friends. And after three walks, three hours, she starts to accept them. And then I have her give her some water. And then I have little treats. And then she starts looking at them like they're a food source. You do that for another five hikes. And then you gradually taper off with the food. You know, and it's more just sort of petting the dog. And then I gradually let the person with my dog in the front yard. We hang there for a couple of hikes, right? At the end of a couple of hikes, like it's like a 15 day process. You know, I'm sorry somebody beat you and you don't trust anybody, Cleo. But we're going to turn this this apple cart around, aren't we? So now I'm trying to have Mr. J. Lawhead become friends. We'll work on it, right? Okay. Fucking love this dog. Anyways. So people are sitting out and they're taking pictures in front of this Christmas tree. This is such a dumb thing to be annoyed with, but I hate people who take pictures with their fucking uh, iPad. You know, it just looks stupid. Like you're sitting there holding a food tray up in front of your face. I really wish somebody would just step in and give you a hook, like a fucking left hook right around your tablet, right to your face, and knock your goddamn dentures right out of your mouth or your partial something. It's just, it's just annoying. That big, stupid fucking thing. Why are you walking around with that thing? You know, you don't have a cell phone. What are you doing with the thing? I just want to fucking break it over my goddamn knee. Sorry. Hey, maybe that's a new segment. We can get away from the fucking, you know, semi-pedophile questions. What is, what is something that just annoys you and you know it's stupid and it shouldn't fucking annoy you? There's me. I'm throwing my hat in the ring. People who take pictures with their fucking iPad or tablet, I don't like it. It bothers me. It shouldn't bother me. People are free to do it, and I don't fucking like it. All right? There you go. Hey, everybody. Merry Christmas. Just hear those sleigh bells ring-a-ling, ting-ting, ting-a-ling, too. Merry Christmas to a Christian, a Muslim, or a Jew. I don't care. I don't care if it's offensive to you. It's my holiday. I like saying Merry Christmas to you. I'll take some rouge and put it on your fucking cheeks and make it seem like you're happy too. Stop being a fucking cunt and get over by the Christmas tree. Stop being a fucking cunt and get over by the Christmas tree. I will buy you a gift. Sorry. Um, that's the podcast for this week. Thank you, everybody, who came out to my shows this year. This was the greatest fucking year I've ever had as a goddamn comedian. Um, got to play all these wonderful venues. And I'm gonna next year, next year, I'm going to do another special. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Um, probably in the April, May time of year, I'm going to tape it, record it, fucking put it out there, and then I'll work on my next hour. And I'll do another fucking tour. And I'll go to even more fucking cities. Because I don't know what else to do with myself. That's it. Go fuck yourselves. Merry Christmas. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy Hanukkah. And uh, I'll see you out of the mall.